Hey, welcome everybody to another episode of Cigar Store Idiots. I am Rob. To my immediate right is Andrew. Hello. Tyler is on hiatus. He has the night off tonight. Uh, Chief uh, is in Chief's in trouble. Chief's in quarantine. He spent a little time, extra time in Athens, Georgia. He hooked <laughs> he up did. with some turtles and they got lost. He did not come but home from uh, Terrapin. He's back. But he's in, back in Rome. He's back in Rome and he's in quarantine. And he's in a little bit of trouble. Let's be honest. So, um, we want to introduce uh, tonight's guest. We've been looking forward to this. Uh, college football season has ramped up, and the actual college football season starts this weekend <laughs> with the SEC. We want to welcome to the show Rusty Mansell, twenty four seven Sports. Rusty, what's going on, buddy? Oh man, it's we've all been waiting on Saturday. You ain't kidding. There we was, have one more day. One more one day. More day. We, it was uh, there was times this summer I thought. What's this world going to be like without college football on Saturday? A long fall. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, I didn't think it was going to happen. I didn't. I, didn't I mean, I was going to have to seriously get into some home projects that I, <laughs> that I had no business doing, you know. Right. So, but plenty of time to do plenty it. Plenty of time. Heck, I even built a fire pit that, my God, looks like something like a caveman built, but yeah. I would not have been imagined to fall without football. If fans are not, I mean, not even having a product would have been, I hope I never experienced that. Yeah. Yeah, same here. I mean, we, you know, we we got through an, a very odd, uh, almost to the end of a very odd baseball season. Yep. Uh, and you know, football season, uh, college football season's been going for about two weeks now, and uh, NFL's going for two weeks. It is so bizarre to sit and watch a game. I and, wish and they would have fans at baseball. I can't figure out why I they don't have either. Why can't you have five thousand? Yeah. yeah, just separate them. You know, I, I don't thought, understand it either. I even thought they would try to do something around the playoffs and inject ticket prices way up to try to co- recoup some money, but yeah. but that didn't look like that's going to happen. Give it a little bit. Of, I, I, I probably won't say which game, but I went to a local game, high school game, a couple of weeks ago, and there was no worries there. Yeah, on either side. Uh, oh, I went week one. I went week two to a local rival here in Northwest Georgia. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna tell you something. It was slammed out, and I I, I left there that night thinking. How can we not have fans at baseball? Yeah, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. I, I went to game week one, and it was slammed on yeah. both sides. Yeah, man, it's got to be. And then we all shuffle out, you know. Oh, like, like, heard it out through the herd cattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah through two yeah. fences. Yeah. Eh. No. Yeah, I know. Uh, and it, that just kind of is something I saw today, too, talking about the high school football. Um, you know, there was a case uh, that just happened in California. that It's all over the Internet now. The mom that – did not wear the mask. It was in Ohio, the, actually. Oh, was it Ohio? She got okay. tased. Uh, yeah. yeah. She got man. arrested, tased, and drug out of the stadium. I mean, so that is. Because for what now? Because she did not wear, wear a mask. mask. At a middle school football game, she got tased and drug out. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. You know, when we start. You get tased in Georgia for being on the wrong side of the bleachers, but a mask is not going to do that. And that's by somebody's mama. Yeah. That you talk about their kid. Yeah, it scares me when we start quarantining and uh, arresting the healthy, the ones that are not sure. sick. Yeah. That's what scares me. Yeah. That's the next step. We've got to find out this, the, the contact tracing is. Is I, I mean, just my personal opinion is craziness, and I'm gonna t- and I'll tell you something too. This got me fired up, and, and you know we try not to ever get political on this thing, but um, it, it, Halloween is like a big thing that all our kids look forward mm-hmm. to. And yeah. if you if you notice uh, lately, if you go into the Home Depot, I'm sorry, you can go to Home Depot and find some stuff, but if you go to Walmart sure. or if you go to Sam's, and usually they have an abundance of, of decorations and all kinds of things. It is so minimal. You literally have a small section of, of Halloween things. So it's like they're just trying to do away with Halloween this year. And it, it man, it's making me crazy. And I guess they're here. expecting people not to trick or treat. Come Maybe. to my house. I got some candy there, for you. We're going we, uh, to do some of the man sales, I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I got yeah, a five-year-old, and we're going to be trick or treating right. somewhere. If I had to, it's going to happen here. Right. I can tell you. Well, let me ask you, uh, and we'll get away from all that, because I know everybody gets tired of looking at that on the news all the time. Um, so what's going on in the college football world in the SEC? What, what, what's going on with Rusty Mansell these days? I think tomorrow, um, people need to say your whoever you pray to tomorrow because tomorrow is the third party test. So, for example, Georgia, say Kentucky, both mm-hmm. teams will get on planes. So tomorrow, both teams are going to be quick, rapid tested. And if you positive there, you're not getting on the plane. You're done. There's no hey, let's retail. You're out. So wow. tomorrow, to me. I hope there's no news, but that's the kind of stuff I'm paying attention to because I think they've had some third-party testing already. It won't be the first time. I'm not saying somebody's cheating. I'm just saying it's an outside company that comes in, and it's the SEC approved. Mm-hmm. So um, those teams will be tested tomorrow, coaching staff and everything. So you look at that, and potentially everybody could lose a player at some point. So what happens, you know, if – 
say Auburn goes to play somebody in a couple of weeks in Bo Nix test, you know, yeah. or DeWan Mathis test positive, you know, JT Daniels is not ready. That means Georgia's going with, with Stetson Bennett in the first game probably. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of things. What if your whole happen. offensive line? That's that that's was something the game that happened. Like Notre Dame. Yeah. Notre Dame got yeah. canceled. Yeah, absolutely. Notre Dame got canceled. That I mean, last week. Yeah. And, and the scary part is if it starts happening too much, we fear them just doing away with it completely, right? Yeah. I mean, I th- listen, I, I think the SEC has already dug in and said we're going to have it. But I think there's going to be some hiccups. Mm-hmm. Somewhere along the line, somebody's going to lose a game now. Having only in conference games, how are they going to make that up? What day they're gonna make that up? They do have the extra week. They got the one week. The one week. Okay, so that's gonna be. I would imagine. My guess is they'll probably two games at some point that'll be canceled for okay. somebody. Yeah, I agree. Two different games. It'll happen. It's just mathematically probably impossible not mm-hmm. to happen. I, I can I can handle a cancel game. Let's don't cancel season. No, yeah, I don't think yeah. I think we're good. I knock on wood. I think we're gonna get there. Now, there's gonna be some hiccups. Like in high school football, I was in touch with Dr. Hines a good bit, uh, Georgia High School Association, and. To his credit, he said the whole time when there was a lot of pressure for him not to do this, he said the whole time, we're going to have hiccups. Mm-hmm. We're going to have hiccups. And we have. But, you know, the writing is the 7% that are not playing, they make the headlines. The 93% that are playing, nobody says nobody anything about it. Nobody talks about it. So you know, there's going to be some hiccups. I think we all got to understand that, and we got to do the best we can. Unique situation. But it's crazy because – the state championships in Georgia this year is a week after Christmas. Oh, wow. So they don't have us. When they postponed it two weeks, they ate up their safety valve. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they've got to make sure they right. stay on task so they're not getting the state championships in, into January. Right. So we'll see how that goes. Is that still moved? What do you mean? Well, was it last year they didn't play? Last year they didn't play in, in the Mercedes Benz. That's right. That's what I'm over referring to. Contract. Yeah, still Georgia State. Now, this will probably, in my opinion, be the last year because Arthur Blank took a massive hit because he he wouldn't cut into high school teams any break. From what I know, you know, they got the helmets in the right. stadium. Yeah. Right. A lot of those high schools sent the Falcons a letter and said, you take our helmet take down. Take our helmet down. Really? Yeah. We're, we're, so he had some he had some stuff that, that uh, he faced a little pressure on that. So I think this second year at Georgia State will be it, and then I think they'll go back to Mercedes-Benz. Matter of fact, I know there's another – there's another TV company that's bidding on the state championships, and if they get it, it will definitely be a Mercedes Benz. Okay, one hundred percent. It should be, man. I mean, yeah, it should be. I'm not a proponent of playing the state championships in Mercedes. I wish they played the semifinals there. We played on the state championship at home, right? That's that's the feeling I think because my my little beef with is, is you win the state championship and two minutes later they're hustling you off the field, get off the field. You know, and you get to go celebrate with your people in the bleachers and outside but that feeling of being at home or or, or at a stadium where your mom and dad and uncle and everybody come to the field with you is right. different but um mercedes-benz is, is a one-of-a-kind experience those kids they love it now it's they, they're it's just so used to it so yeah yeah pack and big 10 is it too late no no big 10's obviously starting up what halloween 23rd and Isn't they got that crazy it is crazy they, i'll tell you why they're doing it my personal opinion, because they know they got a chance at national championship. They got Ohio State. Okay, yeah, they need Ohio yeah. State. They've got Ohio State. It. They need that, and uh, they're loaded now. That team is loaded. Yeah, and they're gonna probably just run through that Big Ten. Yeah, and I don't so, see anybody competing with them. Penn State, Penn at State Penn maybe. State, gonna be at Penn State's gonna be tough. Yeah, and they'll probably have a game which you always you know that sometimes you turn over there that noon game and like I was up in the third quarter. You're like, what happened? And we're all going, yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, but uh, I think the Big Ten's fine. The, the, the Pac-12 is the one that's like, they better vote Monday. Yeah. They're, they're kind of like, we're going to start at our own pace. Well, the playoffs aren't going to wait on you. No, they're not. So the only really hope they would have there would be Oregon, and Oregon lost their game against Ohio State. So I just I just don't see them. I'm not sure they got the same agenda mm-hmm. as the big team. They had to get Ohio State on the field. Yeah. So I guess Ohio, I, I guess I guess the pack probably doesn't play enough, uh, doesn't play a hard enough uh, or enough ranked teams in their own conference to make you know, into a playoff. It would be tough because you, yeah, right. you think about Oklahoma, who's sitting out there, and you know that league didn't have a great opening getting beat by Coastal Carolina, Arkansas right. State, and, and all of them, and got right. hammered. Yeah. It was a bad so you it start was not look, a good opening week. For so that, you, for you look that at the, you look at the uh, the Big Twelve and 
Um, I, I think that Oklahoma is a team that probably going to run through that. So if you really look at this, man, it's probably Ohio State, Oklahoma, and Clemson, which are locks, are pretty close to lock as you can get. And I don't then, know who could be Clemson. And then you got an SEC, SEC champion. Yeah, no, you got SEC, that's right. Yeah, you got an SEC champion. So, that's right. Um, that's it, not good for the game of college football. It's yeah. not good. You know, we're all fans of teams that potentially could make it, so it's it's okay with us, but – uh, it's not good for the game. I really think they need to get that thing to eight. They need to get it to eight. I, I think agree. they. I think they need Man, to go, I agree. I think they need to go. And this the, may be the year they do it. They I don't just know if they, forced. It's going to be a little bit late, but it might be the year that puts them over the top. So we need to do something different. Yeah. We need to do something different. So I think they ought to have it at least one at large. Yep. And then uh, the conference champions. Yeah, I think, play it out. and I think everybody's pushing for that. We've all been pushed people, for eight. Yeah. yeah, we've all been. I think they can get to eight. Yeah, I think they get to eight. I think now's a good time as any. So I think anybody yeah. past eight doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of chance anyway. So it eight, would, be, eight would tough, be perfect, man. It'd be tough, but I think you can. You know, there's always going to be somebody. Well, we ought to go sixteen. You know, it's always. But I think you That's get to eight. Many. You get the conference champs. You get an at large, right. and then you get the highest G five. You know, you get Central Florida. Yeah, some at Boise right. State. Right, somebody like that. you give them a chance. Or what was it? Uh, what Minnesota? Minnesota had a good heck. What was it Minnesota? Minnesota had a couple games. They beat Penn State last year. Well, yeah, that's right. Central Florida, you know, went undefeated twice. They rode the boat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, rode the boat. Yeah, yeah. they got rode. Yeah, road. they did. Yeah, they, they, did. Off they did. They did. So, uh, but I, I think it's uh, there's enough for that at large to stop. I mean, you take for example Georgia two years ago losing to Bama at the very last basically one minute of the game, and yeah. you could still tell them, regardless of who, regardless of who who you are. That, Georgia would be a top three team at that yeah. point, and they were out. Mm-hmm. So um, you look at Auburn that played an SEC championship with injuries. You know they just beat Alabama and Georgia. You know they probably had enough to be an at large. Mm-hmm. Well, th- like I said that year, and I wasn't. I went to the SEC championship game, and I I will always say it's tough to beat a team twice like that. Sure. And, and I knew we came limping in a little bit, but that's you know everybody's hurt that time of year, so I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't you know throw an ad at anybody, but. Uh, I don't. Nobody in the country could beat Georgia, Alabama, yeah. and Georgia. Yeah, that ain't yeah. gonna happen. I don't no, care who no. you are, and especially when you, with that situation, the way those two games ended, and then you go play Georgia at Mercedes Benz, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. and so it was just and they, and the running back injury really changed that game for it them because you go back and look at the game before that really, and they were um, still up at halftime. At halftime, I thought, you know what. Had we're doing better than I thought. We're yeah. still we're winning yeah. at halftime. I watched and that then that game. turnover. Turnover was a big. It deal. changed it. Changed the game. Absolutely changed, changed the, game. the game. Absolutely yep. changed the whole game. Yep. That's DeAndre Swift's little coming out party there. Yeah, yep. it was. And everybody kind of realized he's got he got some Speed. wheels on him. That long yeah. touchdown he had, he was running right at me. I, I, I <laughs> it was running toward the corner we were at. Yeah. And man, he could motor. I can I can hear you say, "Get him, get him, <laughs> get him." I mean, right now, you I know. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I kind of knew. It was going south when that turnover happened. I thought, yeah, that's it right there. Hard to believe Charlie's not with the Braves. That's yeah. the whole subject. Probably. It is. It is. Golly, that's a whole other thing. All right, let me ask you, uh, I mean, being a big Bulldog fan and, and such as myself, what are we doing about the quarterback position right now? You know, Newman <laughs> Newman kind of opted out. Yep. And uh, Daniels, is it his knee? Is it? What, what, he's not, I know he's not cleared. He, he had a, He's had some soreness. Okay. And he had his knee scoped. He had ACL last year. So that was in November, I think. So yeah. he comes back in April mm-hmm. and had it cleaned out. They had to go back in just to clean it. So he faced a, probably about a one-and-a-half time rehab because he's come back from that. So he comes to Georgia, you know, gets here in mid-June. So he spends the time here. He's had some soreness in the last couple of weeks in that knee. Now – um, I think at some point pretty soon it's going to be cleared. Okay. I I don't – it may not be this week, but potentially could be Auburn. Once the soreness has gone away, he's going to be – he can play. Okay. Now, he hasn't had the quote-unquote live bullets in practice where he's getting tackled to the ground. Mm-hmm. And really, Dwan is that neither, but they really will thud you up and wrap you up a little bit and let you go. I mean, he hadn't had any – when he comes in, it's basically two-hand touch on him. Okay. So, it take a little while for him to get back uh, kind of in the fold, but – I think right now, just just to be honest with you, man, I think this is Dwan Mathis' team. It's his to lose. Yep. Um, he's a big time athlete, and I th- I have to be real careful because I said this on the radio yesterday, and, and I got like <laughs> five hundred texts, like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I have to be real careful with this statement. When you see him, 
it's going to give you a lot of Vince Young vibe. Okay. He's a six six dude, and he can roll. Dual three he guy. can fly. Okay, and this kid can fly. Now, can he process after snap? You know, he's pretty accurate, but how's he going to be when when everybody's going? Nobody knows that. You know, the kid hasn't played in twenty months. A yeah. live snap. So right. there's a lot. But when you first see him, you're going to think, man, this. It reminded me of Vince Young. Okay, this huge kid. And you remember how Ben Young just take off and just, oh, yeah. just glide on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And won the national championship. One of the play. best national championships. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he won the national Great. championship on that fourth down. That's right. Run. And so, he, he's not an easy dude to tackle. No, no. no. <laughs> and and, 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 and I, I just want to be real careful. I'm not saying Dewan Mathis is a Heisman national. I'm just saying that's who he's going to compare to once you see him. Okay. He's not as thick as Cam. I don't think people realize when they see Cam, like how big a man. He's humongous. Yeah. He's a he's 250. Yeah, the man. If you see him in person, you do, there's no way he's a quarterback. I spent a lot of time with him in the offseason because I cover his seven on seven team. You know, right. he puts all these guys in Atlanta, and 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 kudos to him, man, because you know he I've I've saw him quoted. He said, "Man, I don't play Xbox. I don't hunt. I don't do." It. He goes, "I coach these kids. That's my hobby," and he spends a ton of time with these guys. That's man, awesome. A ton. He does a great job with that. But I'm around him a lot, and I yeah, sometimes I look at him like that guy is a freaking quarterback. quarterback. How can you yeah. tackle yeah. that guy? You yeah, know? who wants you to can tackle see him, that You can guy. see him in the end. When you watch him again on TV, you can watch him in a huddle, and like he's he's, he's looking over, over everybody. he's looking over everybody. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially when the wide receivers are back there with him, he's like looking <laughs> yeah. straight to the sideline. You know, you think Wes Welker is going to give him some water? So <laughs> like, what is he even doing in the huddle? <laughs> so, uh, but that's kind of I think it's Dwan Matz's team. I really do right now. Okay, we'll see what happens. I think so. If he plays well, you think he's he's a quarterback he's a guy, to go out? I think he's the guy because. Look, because I mean, JT was no JT. I, he was a five star quarterback he's coming a five-star out. Five star quarterback. He, yeah, he's got he a big arm. It. He's got a big arm. He can throw it. It's great to have that competition there. I think if Dewan Mathis does not play well, he could very easily lose that thing and be on the pine the rest of the year because mm-hmm. you don't want to give JT Daniel a second. It was almost like the Jacob Eason Jake Fromm deal. Jacob yeah. Eason had the job the entire fall, but I kept hearing man like Jake Fromm's pushing this guy. Dave Franz pushing this mm-hmm. guy, and lo and behold, he gets hurt on the first series, and he never got it back. Yeah. It was over. So that's kind of the situation I think with Dewan Mathis. You know, he needs to play well, yeah, and to keep this thing. But he brings a different package. And I talked about this today. What's the goal for Georgia? It's to win the national championship. Er, to get yeah, there. Absolutely. To get there. To get yeah. there. That you know they've had success against Al- Auburn. They've had mm-hmm. success against Tennessee. Mm-hmm. They've had success against Florida. The team has been a thorn in their side in Alabama. Well, what beats Alabama has been a dual threat guy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, every exactly time right. Well, every time this beat Auburn has done it. Yeah. And Nick Marshall. I mean, all these guys, dual threat guys and Joe Burrow. Burrow yeah. Let me tell you something, his legs, the most underrated part of that guy. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's he going to be a stud, stand, man. He's, he's going to do great. He was he's also, he was also though. He was accurate as hell. Yeah. I man. talked to Brad Johnson yesterday. Uh, his son, Max is at, LSU, and he's got a junior 6'5 tight end in Oconee County. And oh. We were talking about uh, – What a luxury. We were talking – you know, kid. We were talking about um, Burrow, and he's talking about LSU last year. He got to watch some tape. He went to the Auburn game, he said, and, and got to stay the next day and watch tape with the offensive staff. And he told me – because here's Brad Johnson. who played 17 years in the NFL now. 17 years. Uh, right. and, and, and he's like, uh, man, that guy – is the closest thing to Brady we may ever see. Unreal. He goes, and the thing about him is he's got better wheels than what Tom's got. Yeah. He goes, I don't know if they're going to have the package and players around him. I was about to say, he's not you exactly know, Brady, in New England, though. Brady got Brady got the pieces to the puzzle. That's right. You know what I mean? And, and they did just a great job. But I'm telling you, man, Joe Burrow. Because I'm going to tell you, that SEC championship game, I stood on the sideline. <laughs> We left before halftime. And it was 17 to three at half, and it felt like it was 40 to three. Yeah. Well, you but knew the that defense we, played great. We didn't have, I mean, they just I, couldn't score. No, no. I mean, I and he knew. kept making play yeah. after play after play. There was one point, well, right before we left, I mean, uh, after we got beer poured on us, oh. we, uh, <laughs> I looked at, I looked at my, uh, my fiance and I was like, uh, don't you know somewhere good in Atlanta we can go in? Cause this ain't going to get any better. Yeah. Well, I mean, he uh, just picked us apart. I mean, it was coming. It's one of the best teams I've ever seen. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're, they, 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 man, I'm telling you, I, they were lo- low. You start, you start loaded. thinking about those all time sure. SEC championship sure. teams. And I'm not so sure there's so many out there that would beat them. You know, I don't either. He, Their defense they were was scoring. Tray, Trayvon, well, they were, but they were also scoring at will. Yeah. Trayvon Walker is one of the most athletic kids I've ever covered. Five star Georgia basketball state championship basketball. This kid's 6'5, 275. He's one of the most athletic, freaky dudes I've ever seen. He had a one on one with Joe Burrow 
and that dude juked him out shook him out of his and shoes and i knew i said you, that that's hey that was it yeah. that dude's different man and he not only did georgia dial up a perfect blip and they had the guy they wanted to hurt him he extends a play goes to his right and he throws a damn BB. bullet for about 50 yeah and chase catches it and runs it down to about the two yeah and I mean, I said, boys, this this that, that's ball pro- game. That's probably the point where we uh, that's Googled, probably Google two urban licks and went probably, and down. That, <laughs> I that, mean, that's the guy was unbelievable. You don't have those moments in the game. I was like, nope, yeah, you ain't getting that dude. And yeah. then all those, you know, I mean, look at all those first rounders they had. Speaking, of, yeah, okay. So speaking of, so LSU has thirty one players off that team that would not be on this year's team. Yeah, they got a lot. Whether 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 it's graduation, yeah. whether it's the draft, or whether it's dismissal, 31 players. Yeah, the most important one is Joe Burrow's not there. Yeah, that that's is, right. They lost Joe Montana. Yeah. Now, they've always, I think us being SEC fans, they've always had great athletes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They have always been that team that scares the They can beat you any Well, they pull Saturday. out of Texas, but and that helps never, them. They've never had that guy, right. yeah. quarterback, you right. know. And when they did – they made it count. That's you right. Know, and it's kind of like he That's came right. out. He came out of nowhere. Like it's he crazy. just came out of nowhere. Great. You know, it's you think about it. Him and Dwayne Haskins battled for the job at Ohio State. And I heard a Meyer interview. And he said, "Look, we he said we almost gave that job to Joe Burrow." So Haskins goes seventh in the first round, and he goes one. Yeah. So I mean, they had two dudes battling. loaded. But you know what was crazy? Nobody was going to take Burrow. Yeah. Nebraska didn't take him. What kind of decision is that, man? Not a, not a good one. That's why. That's <laughs> why. That's why you see him when he talked about Orgeron and yeah. that Heisman Trophy, how yeah. emotional he was yeah. because he I believed was, in it. I was like a nobody else did dream come true. Like yeah. I can go play for those guys. Yeah, and yeah. they don't have anybody. I'm yeah. going yeah. right. So it took him a little while to get him dialed in. You know, I went to the George LSU game down there two years ago, and that was the first time I thought, "What well, a dude, she's." Because nobody really knew him. Yeah. Yet. I mean, knew he kind of, but he made some play beat the piss out of Georgia down there. Yeah. And uh, he uh, he made all kind of plays, man. I was like, this guy's pretty damn good. Yeah. yeah. And I knew last season, you know, all the hype was kind of on Georgia. Had everybody back and all that, you know, should have be kind of, probably should be Alabama year before. But here's a little LSU just creeping around. You know, they were sitting there in preseason going, yeah. Yeah, let all the yeah, sure. over there. Let them right. have the heat. Well, this is what we got. I'm yeah. promise you what we got here. Right. So, Orgeron, man, he's hard not to lie. No, I was going to say, man, he's, he's hard not to lie. Hey, he's that single. guy. We like to go drink beer. He's single. I would love, I'd love to go single. hang out with Coach. Could you imagine like like taking him to Nashville and yes. just going down like Broadway with him one night and just watching him in action? As long yes. as he brought a translator. Oh yeah, <laughs> man. I can imagine after a couple yeah. of drinks with it. What he oh my god, I would love imagine? to hang with Coach O. Yeah, that would be that so dude much fun. Sweats yeah. gumbo. Him yeah. and Leach. We'll bring Leach with us too. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> they, they're playing first game, man. I know, I tell you, that's going to be crazy. That is going to be. Awesome. I mean, to ha- we got Leach, and you know, we got Kiffin. That's us, why I missed that the media days, man. Right? I was so. How great would that have been pumped. this year? And that was going to be in Atlanta too. Yep. Those two guys, man. Who, it'd been who's great. who's your toughest interview? Like who's who's wanted you? Just like you almost the starstruck. You, know you know who? Well, you know I've never been one to. I've just I've only been starstruck really. I think in my whole life around two people, and one was Peyton Manning. Okay, when I saw Peyton Manning, and I was like, God, that guy is massive, yeah. and like kind of like. Was you talking about Peyton I, himself or his head? Uh, yeah, both. <laughs> okay. well, I, well, I saw him. They beat. Oh uh, God. You're gonna get mad. They beat Auburn in the SEC championship. Yeah. I was there. I saw him at uh I was there. Buckhead Brewery. So he comes rolling in about three o'clock in the morning with about six of the massive offensive linemen. I'm in Buckhead's back in Buckhead's prime. Yeah, well, Buckhead's right. great. Right. Right. Buckhead's prime. And we're sitting there and dude got, walks in. Got I got kicked like, out of a sister hazel concert <laughs> that night. <laughs> <laughs> so dude walks in and uh dude walks in. I swear to God, this is the honest to God's truth. All I can say about this, but I'll tell you what happened. Me and Mike Bobo got left. We were at the game. God is my witness. Me and Mike Bobo wrote in a orange and white checkered hearst from the Georgia Dome, and they dropped us off in Buckhead. <laughs> nice. And the only stipulation was he's got to take a picture with us when we get out. It was a dentist from Chattanooga. So we were desperate. Hell, there wasn't no ride. Uber or nothing like that. I was no, like, this, right. is, this is our ride, dude. Yeah, yeah. So we got to ride. Yeah. So we ride, we ride to – to Buckhead in a checkered white hearse. <laughs> That's great. So we get out and the guy takes a picture. And I remember 
we're standing there and people started kind of like recognizing Mike at that point. We got out of the car because dude stops the whole traffic, you know. I we got to that bar. I said, did we just really ride in a freaking <laughs> orange and white checker or hers? It's a bucket. <laughs> but uh, covering Elijah Holyfield, I met a Vander. Yeah. And we were at practice one day uh, at the Rising uh, Senior All-Star Game. It was a junior All-Star Game, and uh, Elijah played. And standing there, he was kind of by himself, and I'm going to mess with him. But said, He's not a very approachable he's dude. He's not a really approachable dude, but he did come up to me and say, hey, do you – rank kids and i said yeah i'm, I'm rusty 24 7 he he had like he knew me he didn't have a clue i was i had a 24 7 shirt that's yeah. why he came and asked me he said what do you think about him and i said you know powerful blah blah blah. you know kind of talked about him a little bit and i said look man i, said, I know everybody asked you this i said but i gotta get a picture with you and he kind of looked at me he said, <laughs> no problem i said look you realize that you're the only dude on the planet that what Mike Tyson's asked twice. That's yeah, right. I said I could get the picture. That's right. Yeah. I remember he he's got he grinned. Yeah, yep. But when we, when I looked at his right hand, man, his knuckles lunchbox. I mean, they looked like they had been beaten with hammers. Yeah. Jesus, and you can't. I was trying not to focus on the ear when I'm talking to him. But, but you, you got to look. Your eyes look go, I was that. right there. You got to look. And yeah. it's like it's like a triangle piece <laughs> gone. It's terrible. Gone. But I told him, I said, man, I, I said, you what Mike Tyson's asked twice. I said, I, I I would walk into every store and just say, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, mean, I that's whipped right. his ass twice. Right. So, 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 so much so that he gets scared and starts biting. That's ear. really the only yeah. two, though. I mean, I've met some very cool, very, I mean, had a chance to hang out with, um, we went to Boston, Fenway a couple years ago, hung out with Luke Brown, his bus, went to a concert, Sam Hunt. Sam Hunt giving me hell about being Pepper. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Giving me absolute hell. Giving my, telling my wife, "Was like, what are you doing with somebody from Pepper?" You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, but yeah, I've met some very cool people in this in this in this job, and um, bet you have. I've met some really cool. I mean, you know what the best part about this is watching these kids go from where they were. Like, I'm really close to Alvin Kamar. Yeah. Really close. That's awesome. But we still talk a good bit, you know, and and uh, you know, I remember. I don't know. It was probably his at the end of his junior year. Uh, he called me one night and said, "Hey, what well, I need to be a five, what I need to be a five star." I said, "Alvin, you just keep keep doing your stuff, you mm-hmm. know, and it'll get there." And he yeah. goes, "Well, I'm, I'm gonna be a damn five star." Yeah, and I was like a 16 year old kid telling me that. Yeah. And I was like, "It's different, man." You right. know. So we, we, but he was more, more mature. Mm-hmm. What you see on TV, you know, he's quirky. He's got his nose pierced. Yeah. He's really big into fashion. Yeah, but don't get that wrong. Like that kid is an, a competitive competitive athlete and, I, and i'll be honest with you he he is the saints offense right oh now my gosh, i mean no so versatile. He is, he's the only guy that's making it happen right now that's so, honest guy's truth. so versatile yeah and trevor uh, trevor's a little different because i met him in eighth grade but like his his family are such good people yeah it's so trevor lawrence trevor lawrence yeah so fun to watch what's about to happen. like i taught his dad yesterday we talk once a month and there is so much going on with him. I hope the Falcons lose every stinking game <laughs> for the There's rest of the so year. Much, like, man, like, Tanking for Trevor. Like Nike and Adidas are, are head to head over him. Yeah. Like, oh, because yeah. of Adidas. I mean, head and shoulders. He's going to get, he's just head and shoulders is going to write him a head check. Head and shoulders is going to, yeah. They're going to write him a check that, you know, his kids can go any private school in the world. Yeah. Oh, are you being serious when you said that? Serious. You're going to be in so they're talking commercials to him. with They can't uh, talk to him yet. Troy but he, they, have, they have this, this marketing deal. He can't sign with an agent yet. He right. can't do it. His dad can legally talk to those people. Yeah. So there's people that tell him, like, you know, it's that third party stuff, like right. head and shoulders is letting you know that right. they're going it's, to come to the table, right. you know. But it's crazy that what's about to happen to him. But he's such a, you know, he's such a really good kid. They were talking about what is it? Was this freshman or I guess it was his freshman year? They were talking about if he was in the NFL, the, Velocity on his ball, he would have been the top yeah, three that, in the that, NFL yeah, yeah, as a freshman, freshman in ridiculous. college. So last, this is September. So last July, or so what, fourteen months ago, um, I'm in Rock Hill, South Carolina, at a camp, FBU camp, and they brought me in to cover it. But Trevor, Derek Brown, DeAndre Swift, Derek Brown. Andrew Thomas, and um, the corner at Clemson, who's one going to be the high pick, they worked the camp. To one day, it's legal. They can come in as long as you pay. They pay those guys like they do a coach. So they came in and worked. And that night, the camp director was going to take us all to eat, and we we're going to be at this. They like it's a private deal. Don't worry about it. 
we're going to eat there. And I said, that's cool. So I know all these kids, you know, I, I knew Derek really good, really good kid went to Auburn and I wish we still had him. So I walked in, it's a, it's a very nice, very cool restaurant. It's an old water pump house. And they had, you have to go up to the third floor to this restaurant. It overlooks the river down in Rock Hill. Incredible view. And they got this glass patio area. They had it blocked off for us. So when I walk in, literally it's me, another coach, and then Derek Brown, DeAndre Swift, Andrew Thomas, three basically first rounders. Yeah. Future millionaires. Nobody flinched. Nope. Nobody even turned their head. So I'm leaning over the rail and I see Trevor pull up and they, they let him out and his girlfriend, who's his fiance, and they let them out. And a guy meets him there at the thing. I thought, you know what? I bet they're going to, this is going to be interesting. So you have to come to this elevator and you have to kind of walk through the crowd to take a right to go out to where we were. Oh, yeah. So I'm standing at the glass window when he comes out of the, of the thing. It was so funny because, you know, here's people drinking beer. I had no idea Trevor Lawrence better. How quick those people who try to get their phones are just def- dropping their phones <laughs> right. in their yeah. beers, and everybody's like, right. "Holy crap!" You know, you could tell, you know, because Clemson, yeah. South Carolina, yeah. you know, yeah. basically. So and people, he stands out. And, yeah, and he stands he's, out. Yeah, that's right. Six, six. That's so right. He's starting. The people are trying. So basically, nobody got to get a picture because when he got to the door, security shut the glass door, oh. and he was out there. So he sits down. He sits with me, and everybody's in that room. So he sits right here where his back's against you. So they had a guy, a security officer at the door. And, and I bet you, I sit there. I never even told Trevor, but I sit there and watch 30 people come up and look like, you can see like, well, look, I just want to, yeah, just yeah. let me talk to him. You know, let's, let's say, so let's one picture. Hey, they got we know each other. That. So we're there a while. We're there eating dinner. And, and, um, so he walks out and of course they have people escort him out. It was so, I knew he was a rock star because he comes by and people were just waiting. They're just snapping pictures. So, he gets stuck at the elevator because the elevator's not there, but they had security basically between him and the people. This woman, probably late 40s, comes flying up, and Trevor's backs to her. She takes her camera, and she takes her hair and pulls it out, and she takes a selfie basically with Trevor's hair and her hair. Oh my <laughs> never God. had a picture of Never had a picture of Trevor's face. How crazy is and that? And I looked. So, and she <laughs> went, I said, I said, Really? She said, I'm a Clemson fan. I said, well, You're you got, I mean, you got a picture of his right. hair. You got a picture of his hair, you know? And I was like, <laughs> but, you know, he has to, uh, he, he's in a different world. I um, mean, he will be too. He goes to one of these cities, yeah. you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He I seems hope he, like a solid dude, man. What I hope he don't end up is going in the Jets. Yeah, I don't think that. And he's a pull of Eli Manning on that yeah. deal. <laughs> like, you know, they, I, I, I never ask his dad about stuff like that. We yeah. always talk about the other stuff and. Um, but you know, Jacksonville was kind of the preseason favorite, but obviously they're playing a little better. Yeah. I saw their fans were pissed. They're like, man, we want Trevor. Yeah. You know, yeah. Right. that's a real thing. Tank for Trevor <laughs> gets, gets mad because they win. Kid yeah. from Cartersville, you know, in one quick story, you know, he, he lived in the Woodland district. So he lived in New Harley. Right. But he went to Cartersville from like seventh grade on. And it was kind of a sore subject you know people around the woodland wouldn't oh, really yeah they wouldn't really hype you know they, they wouldn't buy no trevor lawrence hype you know we we don't care you know mm-hmm. so we're at a camp at lake point one time um the big baseball complex there and i don't know what the guy was doing but there was a guy there and he would make you remember the year a couple of years ago when they had the straight out of lindale straight out yeah, of Rome. Yeah, yeah that was really yeah. a, well around that, that movie that was really a great idea yeah, right, way, straight right. out of lindale right. <laughs> so um we're sitting there and the, guy, place the guy walks up to to trevor and he goes uh what do you want you want a shirt and he looked at me and said what do you think i said you get one that says straight out of you harley and he goes i am i said don't do that it'll yeah, kill you was, yeah <laughs> so, so, mad. so you know, something happened i'm over here talking and somebody's going his dad texts me at night and goes i'm gonna kill you <laughs> so what happened he goes my son just left the house on a straight out of you harley t-shirt <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and i said man oh my god you but, should say i'll pay you for a picture with so that. i asked him last year we were at dinner i said uh you still got that? And he goes, Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> he gave me his, uh, he gave me his, um, his, um, army, his army all American Jersey. Nice. It's cool. signed to yeah. Rusty. That's awesome. know, so that's hanging up. He got a Kamara Jersey. Um, he got a sweet Sony, uh, running in the end zone autographed, you know, yeah. big, big thing. And it's really different when you cover these kids, Yeah, you know, you wish for the, you know, it's, 
on Saturdays you're still a fan. Yeah. But it's not you kind of root for those guys. You the know? good guys. The good guys. You want to see them like make Derek it. Brown, man. You know, Derek, you know, his mom and dad worked, but you know, I'm sure it was a grind for them. But like he got life changing money. Yeah. You know, he got life changing. But you talking quick. about Beast, the man. hype was real. Yeah, oh yeah, he was good. because he was, he was good. All yeah, he didn't he didn't look good against the smalls because I mean he he would look good against Florida and he yeah. looked good against Jordan. He looked good against everybody. You know what's yeah. crazy? He's like Derek is about to marry his high school girlfriend. They got two kids. Oh wow, really? And then Trevor's going to marry his high school. Mm-hmm. They've been dating since seventh grade. I knew Trevor was with his high school. I read his her her mom made a post the day they got engaged, and it was it was pretty cool. I don't know how she worded exactly. She was like, I pulled up one day in the bus line in seventh grade, and I saw her holding hands with this kid. And she was like, and last night he asked for a hand in marriage. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. You know. That was, uh, I remember when they posted the picture of Trevor <laughs> and his knee didn't touch the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So they said, this, this, this play is not, is not dead yet. It's under replay. It's under replay. He's, he did not touch the ground when he proposed. So. My, my daughter is, uh, I think Trevor's age, and she texts me that night. She goes, my whole sorority's upset. Uh, <laughs> I said, why? She said, because Trevor Lawrence got engaged. We all like, had a shot. I said, y'all yeah. had a shot until then. That's right. That's <laughs> right. so funny. Well, I'll, I'll talk about a hometown guy, uh, and one we always root for, and, and I know Andrew probably feels the same I do about it, and I know you do, uh, Nick Chubb. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you right now, uh, never met a nicer person ever, yep. uh, even, you know, even to where he's at now playing in the NFL, but – I remember uh, the first game he played. I was at that Georgia game when they played Clemson. Yeah. And he ran that touchdown with one shoe on. Sock, yeah. Dude, it was unbelievable. And the people were going crazy. And, and I was telling my friend that I was with, I was like, that's Nick Chubb. He's from Cedartown, yeah. you know. And everybody around him was like, this, they, he knows who this is. It's Nick Chubb. And I was like, yeah, y'all wait. I Dude, said, I'm telling you. He's coming. He's he, coming with a vengeance. And when he got hurt in, against Tennessee, mm. man, I mean, it made me – I was so sick and upset about it. And, uh, and to see him, his work ethic – and uh, that was his mama, hard. and uh, mm. and pushing him, and, and him being who he is, I love watching him play on Sunday. Man, it's was, my favorite thing about Sundays. I now. was there at that game, and my ticket was with right beside the coach's wife. So I was sitting beside Brian Schottenheimer's wife, um, offensive line coach's wife, and all that. And he was he was the offense at the time. Yeah, was the only thing that was going. They just couldn't get everything. He was the guy. Yeah, and. I'm literally probably 10 rows up. So that's the first play of the game mm-hmm. offensively. And when it happened, I saw, I was like, man, his leg don't look right. Yeah. But it, it really didn't click on me until everybody around me started kind of like, oh, God, oh, God. And so I saw them uh, running, and you could see the cheerleaders from Tennessee. I believe it was Tennessee cheerleaders. No, it was the George cheerleaders right there. And they start crying like yeah. immediately. So I turned, and my phone immediately starts blowing up because TV was a little bit behind, a little delayed, a little bit behind. And everybody's like, "Oh God, dude, it's over, it's over." So I'm sitting there, and not there's not a, you can hear a pin drop in mm-hmm. that place. And I look over, and his mom and his girlfriend at the time come flying by me down the steps. Well, they get to the the gate, and I guess the security was like, "Look, man." You know, you're not getting, you're not in, getting in. in. Well, luckily, I knew one guy on the sideline. It was in the manager, uh, the equipment team. And I called him. I said, man, this is during TV timeout. Mm-hmm. My phone, luckily, my phone rang in there. And I called him. I said, Nick Chubb's mom is sitting in this damn gate. Y'all better come get her. Yeah. So I saw him kind of go walk to a police officer. They come and get her. And then, man, it literally took 30 minutes. But I've just, the, the look of uh, him leaving on that cart. I mean, he was he was done. Oh yeah, crying. Yeah, it's hurt bad. Then they got in there, and it was a lot worse than they ever imagined. So, it just really kind of to me, I was like, it's a shame because it'll never be the same. Yeah, it'll never be the same. And um, I've got real close to Nick. Yeah. Real, he's he's quiet now. Mm-hmm. It's really. God, I probably shouldn't say this. He asked me one time because I did some consulting with the Browns, and I said, Nick, you know you have any preference where you go? He goes, I don't care where I go. I'm going to go to Cleveland. Mm-hmm. And he goes to Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, he, well, he, I remember him asking me, he goes, why did they lose so much up there? And this is before they even drafted him. Mm-hmm. I said, right. Nick, I don't know, man. It, you know, 
it's, it's only the second NFL team I've ever done consulting with. So I go there and facilities are ridiculous. I'm assuming everybody's ridiculous. Yeah. And, uh, I know the fan base is crazy there and, they are and great, fanatic. great, um, you know, I it just freaking jinxed, man. Yeah. I hope they turn around, but it was so Me weird because he goes, I, I go anywhere. I just want to go to Cleveland. <laughs> and then he gets picked. Because <laughs> nobody, because they yeah. never win. They never no matter win. who it is. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, though, I loved it last year. Uh, you know, he, he played against the Falcons and the Falcons, of course, had a chance to, to draft him. And when you were dumping, uh, you know, Freeman was not healthy when you were going to get rid yeah. of this guy. And we just, we kind of had some guys just filling the holes and, they could have picked him, and when he busted that ninety-three yard touchdown on him, I was like, "That's what you get, assholes." Tell you, man, Nick Chubb, you get. Nick Chubb, and Trevor Lawrence. When we look back in twenty years ago, man, those dudes were at Cedar Town and Cartersville. Yeah, yeah. Not not just now, like we're twenty years from now, no telling what their careers are going to go into. Like those kids are freaking Cedar Town and Cartersville. Do you, right. do you know the story of Nick running out of his shoe in high school? He blew the side out of it when he made a cut. No, and uh, some kid picked it up on the field, and I think his mom was like, "Give me that shoe." Yeah, and I, I wonder what that shoes were. <laughs> I tell you what, because he I, made a cut and just blew the whole side out of it. I tell you how what type of person Nick Chubb is. So his senior year comes back to Georgia. So it's the last weekend in July. They're about to go to camp, probably around that time. Mm-hmm. And when they go to college, I kind of lose contact. I'll text those guys every now and then. Good luck, you know. And I text multiple. In fact, I text Harrison Bailey this week, Tennessee. I said, "Good luck to you, man." I know you, blah blah blah. And so Nick texts me, and he said are you at home? And I said, yeah, I'm at home. And he said, I'm going to swing by for a second. And I was like, yeah, my wife's there and kids and everybody. It's afternoon. I said, Nick Chubb's about to show up. Yeah. And Brandy's like, for what? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I've done anything wrong or not. <laughs> yeah. So Nick, cook something to eat. <laughs> Nick pulls up, yeah. Nick pulls up dead serious, uh, pulls up, gets out of the car and I walk outside seriously puzzled. Like what's, what have I done? I say something wrong in public and, he comes in, he goes, man, I just want to thank you for everything you've done. Everything you've ever done for me, man. He goes, awesome. you know, my it senior is. year is about to start, and I was just thinking about it. And I got pictures. In fact, I got pictures. I said, well, hell, I'm going to use you for a minute. Some, take some pictures of my kids. You know what? Because because <laughs> my kids were at the door, peeping out like, hey, we're in here. Yeah, you know? yeah. I said, yeah, I'll come out and take a picture with yeah. him. And so funny because my wife's in the picture, and my little girl was like two and a half or three. And my dog's got his freaking nose up Nick's side of his shorts, you know, like <laughs> smelling him. I'm like, <laughs> God, this is what my wife like. and my wife was like damn he screwed that up you know but <laughs> yeah. but that you know those types of stories you know like that's who he is yeah he had Nick Chubb owed me nothing yeah. You know? right yeah but just to show up one day and that's pretty cool it and is. then it's I had cool. uh some really good friends that you know from time to time have kids and want birthday stuff and it's like hey can I I had a guy today matter of fact my teacher in Nashville's son my son's teacher in Nashville's a huge Trevor fan can you get something signed for the years over with, mm-hmm. you know, and those guys usually, you know, They'll take care that. of it. Yeah. yeah. I got a, uh, I got a, I got a question. Um, who's a dark horse in the East this year? We're going to find out because, um, I told everybody, I knew that Florida was going to be the media kind of darling. Mm-hmm. And I've told the members of dogs two, four, seven. I said, I can just see it coming. They got a returning quarterback. That's kind of been the, Mo, you got a returning quarterback. You're kind of that team, and they're loaded with seniors. They loaded are loaded with seniors. I, I tell you who it's going to be. We'll find out. And I did say today on our podcast, I think Auburn's going to take care of business against Kentucky. Yeah. But Kentucky's kind of that little trendy pick because mm-hmm. they're getting the quarterback back. By God, you're the only one I've heard say it. Yeah, they're the trendy pick. Everybody you know. says Kentucky, 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 and you know it's they're the trendy pick. You know, well, I'll have to see it. But it's, I it's, feel a little better with Rusty Terry, Terry Wilson. Yeah. Terry, Terry, he's going to have to stay healthy. Yeah. Um, I think Auburn has done better when they're not in the front of the headlines. There ain't no doubt about that. So, you know, that's the team you sit there. And Bo Nix's second year, talked to Patrick about two weeks ago. And um, I think that – He comes uh, from good people too. I, 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 I like the Nixes. Yeah, they're good people. Um he, he called me the other day because Georgia offered uh, – wide. he's a coach at Central High School down in Phoenix yep. City, and Georgia offered a kid there, and he was like, man, I've been telling everybody about this dude. And the kid at ACL last year came back, and Georgia offered him. He tore Hoover up in the first game, you know. But I met, Patrick, something. I met Patrick when uh, Bo was a sophomore, and it was funny because he called me one night, and he said, hey, can you write a story on Bo? Matter of fact, Bo was a junior. This was right before he committed, probably two months before he committed. He said, well, you write a story on Bo's basically final five schools. And I said, sure. 
He goes, I don't want these Auburn riders to ride it because everybody's just going to assume he's going to Auburn. That's right. I said, I'm sure I'll ride it. So I wrote it, and like all the Auburn riders got pissed off at me, like, <laughs> what are you doing talking to him, man? <laughs> I'm, like, him I'm like, the guy called me, dude. Right, I right. mean, dang, I started right. writing the story, you know. And I text him back like that a couple of days later. I said, man, everybody at Auburn's ready to kill me, man. <laughs> yeah. so, so I don't know. I don't know much. Uh, it's just hearsay. What about his younger brother? He's pretty good. I don't know that he's quite Bo. Okay. You know, it's interesting. Because, because you know how it, it they goes. Had a, they had a senior starter there. And here's Patrick, the new head coach, and all of a sudden he kind of set the senior and started the sophomore who accidentally is his son. Oh. So, you know, there's a little bit of that going on right there right now. But it's it's tough, tough, you know. So uh, I don't know that he's quite Bo. You know, I think Bo Bo is is extremely uh, football gifted, like brain-wise, accuracy-wise. Needs to put some stuff together now. It's right. time to put. You went through that year. It's time to put your stuff together. Right. So, when I talked about Auburn today. I think that Bo Nix is going to take that next step for them. And you know, I think they're my my upset game upset alert was Ole Miss. I'm telling you, man, they got two good quarterbacks. Lane Kiffin's a hell of a play caller. Whatever you think yes, about is. him, yeah. that's right. He's a hell of a play caller. That's right. Florida, everybody in the country is telling Florida how good they are. Mm-hmm. Yes, they are. Everybody's yes, they are. Telling them. So. We'll see. We'll see uh, Saturday. I, I, You know, I did pick Florida, but I think that game is going to be way – I think Florida's 13-and-a-half point favorite. I think that game is going to be way closer than what the – what's Corso say the experts think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, I think that's going to be a, it's going to be a really close It'll be game. interesting to see what – all both those Mississippi schools, man. I just love – I love that those two guys are – they're just complete opposites. And they're – they're to That, that egg bowl will be – oh, I wish that crowd, I man. I can't wait. That's one of the most underrated – football games in the country. Those yeah. people hate each other. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you're in Mississippi. It's one or the other. I tell you what, if they ever were really both good, like 10-0 and 0 and 10-0, that would be – Yeah, state, it was I don't close know, one I don't year. Know, I don't know that state could handle that. <laughs> you know, it wasn't that – it was They were both really good. Well, yeah. yeah. I'm talking about having one of them freak years when, uh, they're both – When Dak Prescott Dak was there. Prescott, yeah. yeah. They were yeah. both in the top five that sure. year. Yep. And we were all like, oh, that's when – I guess Freeze was still at Ole Miss. Yep. Yeah. He was a hell of a play caller. He he beat he was beating up on Alabama. He was beating up on a lot of things, evidently. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah, he was. But he was beating Alabama. You know, yes. he beat him what twice. Twice. And, yep. Where's he yep. at now? He's at Liberty and doing a Liberty. great job. Yeah. Okay. Did they, he's a hell of a. He's a hell of a. They had a big win this week. I mean, they? the guy. What whatever was going on. I mean, it's uh, what I judge is football. Yeah. And this guy's a heck of a football. Yes, he yeah. is. Heck of a football. Yes, coach. he is. Yeah, Liberty's good. They're real good. Yep, he is good. I like. Uh, I like freeze. I mean, just hated it happened to him. Yeah, it's just stupidity, man. Man, just get caught up in it. Yeah, you, know, you realize that how he got caught. Our our twenty four seven Mississippi State guy uh, requested the open records of his phone book, and this guy went through seven hundred no. calls. Oh my god! Oh no! That's why I tell you, Mississippi State and Ole Miss hey, hate each other. That's a real hate. For my sure. man went through. 700 calls until he got one. It was like, wait a minute, who? Who's this? What? 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 Wow. So I got called. Man. And his wife stayed with him. So you know he can recruit. Yeah. He had to recruit her yeah, a second he time. Sure did. <laughs> I mean, what's that conversation like? Look, man, well, listen, I've had a bad couple of months. <laughs> and listen, we're going to put those, we're going to put that behind that's us. That's charisma right there. Let me tell you right now. That's great. God, because that was. I, you know, you kind of forget about that. It seems like it's been so long ago. It really hasn't been that no, long ago. No. But that was, yeah, that was ugly. Yeah, that was a bad deal. That was ugly. That was uh, Petrino kind of ugly. Oh, God. Ugh. That guy. Oh, I didn't know what was going on. Come yeah. on. <laughs> and, and, and that girl wound up marrying her fiance. Sure Unbelievable. Did. I looked that story up probably not too long ago. Yeah, she said she went to work at uh, your South Carolina. So, you know, you hate it, that, that whole situation for, for whatever human decisions people make like that but like that girl will never i don't care where she's at in life she'll, all, she'll always be known she'll as always be that girl's on the back of the bike with trina yep. that's right you know that's right I, I still haven't forgave him for how he treated the falcons oh dude those people hated <laughs> never, him man i'll never forgive him for yeah, that those so. people they 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 i, I heard somebody on six the other day talking about that story uh i think it was uh matt chernoff and they were in the box that night and chernoff said that a big uh college football source he didn't say it would hit him up send him a text said hey man i think that uh Petrino's going to arkansas tomorrow he's like yeah whatever 
He said, I blew it off. No. It was literally 12 hours later, the guy was out of town. Yeah. Now, now I'll say this, mm. and, I, and, and I guess I can't get in trouble because SunTrust isn't uh, SunTrust anymore. I used to work at SunTrust, <laughs> and uh, he, had a, he had a bank account there. So you had to, there's the private banking was like, all the athletes and things like that, you know, you didn't have access to it. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if you know somebody that knows somebody, you can always Shoot. find out anything. So, yeah. and I used to always think that son of a bitch has got so much the oh Falcons my, money oh and God. he's not even there anymore. No, no. God dang it. That you know, terrible. Tennessee was still paying Bush Jones like until I think September 1st. Yeah. I think they were paying a lot of coaches, weren't they? I want, the, Bo- I want the Bobby Bonilla contract. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, give me right. that. I guess it, what, every July every 1st? Year, yeah, yeah. 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 That, that comes up, I'm like, that is insane. It is insane. And, and somebody's like, well, how would you like to know that somebody's okay paying, what is it, one point, what is it, 1.3 I can't remember what it was. million it's crazy. for you not to play for him? I was like, if you're paying me 1.3 million, I'll do anything Yeah, <laughs> every year, whatever. I'll go pick, I'll go pick up litter. My and, feelings is right. My feelings didn't hurt at all. That's so. unbelievable. Yep. So That's Alabama. Right. We need that agent. So Alabama's yeah. the darling in the West, of course, uh, every year. I think they're the most complete team. Who's our dark horse there? I'm not going to talk uh, about Alabama long. I can't help it. Sorry. Uh, well, no, okay it is what it is. I mean, it is what it, they're the favorite every <laughs> year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we and deserve it. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah. As long as Saban's there, it yeah, is what it, it is. It is what it is. I think the team that I'm most interested in would be Texas A&M. Okay. It's time for them to to make a move. I mean, they got $75 million tied up in the sky. You got returning quarterback, Kellen Mond. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, he's been coaching this guy for two years now. This That's his you know M.O. He's supposed to be this quarterback guru. Mm-hmm. Because they hadn't been great, so yeah, it not. see see what they see what he can do. Because I think it's time for them to to make a move or not. Um, I think Mississippi State, and Ole Miss will get a chance. They got a little time. So Arkansas is a complete rebuild. I think Sam Pittman will wind up doing a good job there. But um, Auburn's obviously, I wouldn't say a dark horse because there's you always take Auburn serious. Because God dang it, they can beat Alabama if they can do be anything. Georgia. They can beat Alabama. Can't be Georgia. No, that is crazy. Can it not is. be Georgia. That's well, only, you know, that's Georgia, Georgia, went through, Georgia went through that with Florida. Yeah. yeah God. Georgia went yeah, through 20 did. years of yeah. getting there. And then like 17 3. Yeah. yeah. Their teeth beat in. Yeah. And uh, can't be Georgia, but then it's crazy. Gets, Gus gets his fair wins against Alabama. Yeah. That's what's. That's I mean, he really does. There. Yeah. It's not just once in, you know, every four years. I mean, that's, he, that is he battles every that other is, year. That's, that has saved him. Yeah. yeah there's no doubt about it. I think every other year he can get a win or and he keeps it close every year. So, yeah. Yeah. How would you not? Iron Bowl is always fun. Yeah, it's always fun. The 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 punt play last year was incredible. Oh yeah, it was incredible. Well, that was an incredible game anyway. An incredible game, but it's just I know score, 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 score. I know the Alabama was pissed, but that was a that was a great call. It was a great yeah. call. It was a great call. They got exactly what they wanted to happen to happen. That's exactly right. You know, and 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 the Alabama fans that listen to this, I mean, I I'm not I don't have a dog in that fight. Right. That was a hell of a call. Hell of a call. Not much different. If Saban would have done it, it would have been the greatest call in the history no of, oh, yeah. of Earth. There's no doubt about it. He would have got another statue built. Yeah. Saban's, Probably. Saban's a uh, – he, he is a – he is the greatest college football coach of all time. I don't know if he's the greatest coach, but he's certainly the best recruiter. He's a great recruiter, but he gets he – gets, But I think he knows how to put people he, around he him. He does, man. He does. He does. I, I talked to an, one of their coaches, and they beat Texas, what, 2010? Colt McCoy game, they beat them, won the national championship. Is that the one that Colt McCoy went out early and said, early. I've had enough of he this? Got, he got hit early and he, yeah. said, he tapped. He said, I had enough of this. So they like, get I'm about beat. to get drafted. That's they right. Get, they get beat. And uh, so they, you know, here's these coaches, Alabama, they're pretty much partying all night in LA. I'm going to watch the sun come up. That's right. Saban sends everybody a text at like 8 a.m. the next morning to have a quick staff meeting before everybody spends the rest of the day. And they, they were flying out the afternoon. Spent a whole hour ripping them tell them everything that went wrong everything and one of the coaches that that i know now that was in that room told me said man when we left there everyone was called our agent i gotta get the hell out of here Mm -hmm. this dude's off his rock yeah (laughs) we just won the national championships eight hours ago and we we suck we (laughs) just got the worst coaching staff on the planet that is why that guy's jeffrey's never satisfied yeah you know he he is a different breed if, if nick saban walked in here and sat down it'd be the most awkward interview i've ever had yeah. He's not very good like that. Now, he's good in homes and stuff. But yeah. We'd make sure we had him a Coke and some little this Debbies. Guy, yeah. This <laughs> guy is <laughs> oh, built. Cream pies. This guy's built to coach yeah. football. That's what he does. And he's lost a lot of yeah. – He's. I think he's lost a lot of uh, coaches that way. No, it, I've got – People just don't want to work for him. Well, you know, they, they, they all make the most. Yeah. They use him as a platform. Sure, you know, sure. You know, 
jump, jump from that dock to that sure, dock. Sure, that's yeah. great to have that's it on stock, your resume. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. From, I come from the stable. No I come from this stable. You're just going to yeah. be a miserable SOB while you're there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, I've got a cousin of mine. He coaches high school football, and they would went to a, a, a football camp in Alabama for yep. the coaches. Sure. And uh, he said that Nick Saban – just shreds his coaches in front. He don't like. He's oh, just God, fucking yeah. ruthless. Kirby's, Kirby's tears got them to some of that pieces. Too. Kirby's got some of that in him. Kirby's and, not that deep, but yeah, they're they're not there to make friends. Yeah, and he, he's like, I, I I couldn't work for somebody like that. I'd be fist fighting with you. Them. Could if you're the highest paid. At every yeah, position. you're right. You're right. right. You're right. They, they all you the make high. an exception. And I'd heard there was some beef between Saban and Muschamp because of that. I, I you know when I don't know. I'm I not saying know. I know this, but I just I, I heard it kind of got. Maybe some phone calls when so Muschamp when, uh, was on vacation. I'll give, you a, I'll give you a great Muschamp story. So when was Dakota Dakota Ball? Yeah, yep. Pepper. Yep. yep, goes to Bama. Mm-hmm. So was that twenty nine, twenty eight, something like that? Two thousand eight. Kirby comes up for the spring game. Pepper has a spring game, and Darlington had a game the same night. Spring game they were doing it. So Kirby comes up and lands, goes to the Pepper game. Hits me up. I said, I'll meet you over there. And he said, we'll go eat after the game. So we go there, watch the, uh, half of Dakota ball. And then we go to a quarter of Darlington. And he's like, let's go eat somewhere. And so I take him to Harvest Moon. Well, as we leave, we go through Darlington, go through the locker room. There's a picture of Will in the locker room. So Kirby snaps a picture and he sends it to him. And I didn't know what he had said, but he sent a picture of, of me and me standing beside the Mustang's picture. Yeah. And uh, he's like, yeah, I just talked to Mansell. He said they owned y'all. I mean, they just come, <laughs> just, they just come over here. They just come over here and just wipe y'all up. And, take, and he was like, and take y'all's women. Just, it, just, it was <laughs> true. It and, was all true. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, he didn't tell me this. So we're sitting at dinner, and, and it's kind of loud in Harvest Moon. And Muschamp calls, and he doesn't answer it. You know, he lets it go. <laughs> a few minutes later, he listens to the voicemail, and he's like, oh, my God, you got to hear this. So. Oh my God. My shit, he goes, you tell that mf that I didn't ever lose the damn pepper. I was hurt my senior year. And he starts going down stats. So I never heard of it. Like, it set in on him, man. So bad. I mean, Kirby knew how to push his button, man. And I'm he was kicking his dog. He was. P.S. I mean, we're talking, this was 30 years after we'd ever played. That's hilarious. But Muschamp went nuts. That's great. He said, you tell that mf we never lose a damn, you know. And my senior year, we were hurt, you know. It's so funny. But that sounds got, like Muschamp. Hey, he is high strung. strong. You know, I saw him this summer. It's different because I covered his kid last year, Jackson, who wound up being a, a preferred walk-on at Georgia. And he's got an eighth grader. He's got a rising ninth grader. And I saw him this summer at a uh, at a camp. And we were sitting there talking. And I said, uh, I said, Will. 30 years ago, if somebody had told you that you were the head coach for South Carolina and I was going to be getting paid to be on TV, he said, what would you have thought? He was like, man, they'd probably have drug tested all of us. <laughs> you know, like, what? Immediately, you know. Because he went to work for the, the Osmos guy right out of college. He was selling lumber. Oh, That's wow, what Will yeah. was doing. And I – I can't officially say he got fired, but I'm not sure he was the best salesman in the lumber right. industry. <laughs> right. And somebody so, was probably afraid they were going to get beat up on yeah, a daily basis. Yeah. yeah, I tell people all the time. Scared not that. to buy. Yeah, you know, I'm buying. I'm I don't buying. know how much y'all remember him, but like he was a hell of an athlete. Yeah, he was. He was, yeah, a, hell, he was. He was a hell of an athlete. Yeah. He was baseball player too. Baseball yeah. player. I mean, that's what happened. He broke his leg. Yep. There was a he played left, and there was a fly ball hit between him and short. And the shortstop guys backpedaling wheels coming in, they ran over each other, so it snapped Will's leg. Yeah. In half. so he yeah. missed his senior year. But um, yeah, they did beat us. His his so been my sophomore. It was his junior year. But he knew. He knew. <laughs> yeah, by he knew. That. Tell you. Yeah, that's the, he, he was like, you. Hey, you better clear that up right now, Kirby. <laughs> over there, get that straight. That's hilarious. Yep. Hey, well, hey, Rusty, I got a no, question. Good. Uh, this Rogers kid at Pepperell, how good is he? He's pretty good. He's not the biggest guy. Um, I remember when R- Rick Hurst got the job. Um, I kind of, I mean, I kind of helped Rick recruit Rick to get here. Um, once we found out Rick was involved, wanted it. Um, I remember one the one thing he thought was important was like to go to the, the middle school and primary games. So he called me one night. He goes, "Hey, let's go. Um, uh, you go see this. Um, it's like the rec league championship. It's like sixth grade, Darlington and Pepperell." It's had all the makings of a good somebody's going to jail behind a levee. Right. Yeah, one, right. oh, one of those yes. settings, right. you know? Yes. Right. And uh, I remember that was the first time I ever saw DJ. And we're standing there, and he was like, Who is this kid? I said, I don't know who the fifth graders are. I'm, I'm cover high school, you <laughs> yeah. know? 
And I will never forget as long as I live this plate. They were playing Darlington. And it was funny because Tommy Atha was on that side with all his guys and Rick was over here. I and mean, that was it was a championship game now for, for fifth grade or fifth or sixth, I think. So late in the game, Darlington breaks a long one. I mean, they break a long one. Kids running down the sideline, they're fishing to win the game. DJ runs this kid down, and not only did he run him down, when he ran him down, he stripped the ball from him. So he comes in from behind him, literally rakes the ball out of the kid's hand, turns around, and he's running back the other way, won the game. And then they Darlington had basically, you know, kept him bottled up the whole time, and he had like two runs, and they won like 14 to 12 or something. But I remember Rick standing, he goes, where's that kid's mom? I, said, I don't know. So you better get to him for somebody yeah, else. He went knows. over there, yeah. and, and I'm telling you right now, I never saw Rick again. But yeah. I saw him over there talking to DJ's mom. Right? Yeah. So he's a really good. He's a. He's not that typical bruiser that Pepper's always had. You know, mm-hmm. had yep. Sydney's and the Frankies and Cloud all, of Dust. All these guys are yeah. just big, thick, strong. Yep. Uh, you know, even Jermaine Roberts was a yeah. strong dude. Now, yeah, he was. Uh, but he was. Um, you know, this guy's a very shifty, very quick, and. That look is only luck. I got to go to that game last week because they changed it to Saturday because of potential weather. And to Rick's credit, I walked in at halftime, just listened to those guys in the coach's room, and he he drew a play up on the board, and 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 I'll say in a Lynn Honeycutt voice, made it very <laughs> clear that they were going to run that play in the second half. <laughs> they run that play in the second half on the first play. He gets seventy one yards for a touchdown. Wow! And he he had saw what they were doing, what Bremo was doing. And and DJ busted another long one, but he's tough, man. He's he's wearing a cast. I saw that. He's wearing a cast. I saw that. He's ca- I'm gonna tell you on your Twitter page. I saw yeah, that. he's got. Uh, they've got man. I don't know. They've ever had this many seniors ever. You know, the good news is I think this team's gonna be really good in a playoff run. Yeah, but they're getting they, a quarterback back. They probably get the quarterback back late. But the bad news is, boy, they have had a lot, a lot of, of seniors. Of, yeah, they got a ton to replace. So yeah. Kind of, they need people, to be good this year. They need to be good. I think. <laughs> I think they can be. I think what uh, my daughter's senior year, twenty eighteen, they went the final eight, got beat by the private school in Savannah, got killed. Oh yeah, that Benedictine. was Benedictine. Yeah, but nobody, yeah, play, yeah, nobody yeah. could play with them. Yeah. They were no. state champions. Nobody, and, and, and nobody, base, like baseball. Twelve years in a row, state right. championships. Yes. Nobody can They're play ridiculous, with them. Ridiculous. Yeah. And uh, but I, I think this team has potential to get to to the lead eight if they can get there. That's but, pretty but good then. It'd yeah. be real good. It would be. be a lot of seniors and a lot of good kids, yeah. man. A lot of good, Gabe Goggins, a kid. Yeah, Gabe's You know there. his kid's really good? It's Tommy Hilton's son. Really? Really. Tommy Hilton's son is a lot. And I had no idea who he was. Yeah. yeah. This joker, now he doesn't look like, you see him, he looks like your average high school foot. He made every freaking play on the field. That's awesome. I said, man. His mama must be a hell of an athlete. Because I'm telling you, now, Tommy, Tommy was fast. But I don't know how much Tommy was sticking his nose in there. Right. Like, that kid, really good player. I was impressed with that. Now, look, I'll tell you a little story about Tommy after he got out of high school. Oh. Tommy uh, Tommy got – we got tangled into uh, – we were doing Russian Sambo together in oh, jiu-jitsu. Wow. Wow. So, Tommy may not be fast, but he'll choke the piss out of you. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that. Right? I tell you. So, I mean, it, I dude, was impressed though. with son. I mean, just yeah. – you know, I don't know that he's a college player, but yeah. – I even asked Rick on the sideline, I said, who is that guy? And he goes, yeah. that's Tommy Hilton's son. It's crazy when I'm covering, you know, or so watching our, our, our kids. Friend, yes, our, kids. our kids. That's yeah. when we know we're old, right? Yeah, that is. I, well, you Ken, know, I covered Ken's kid. You know, Ken Irvin's kid played DB at GAC. You yeah. Know? Well, he runs track at Alabama, by the way. Yeah. I realized how old, was, how old I was when I've seen, you know, Pat and Bo play at Auburn. Yeah. yeah. Then you know, yeah. you know, you're like, yeah, I'm old. Hey, I cover Garrison Hurst's kid right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's, yeah. he's a running. As a matter of fact, he plays for Ken at GAC. Okay. And it's, he's a very good kid. He's not Garrison. And it's tough to be in that. You know, I talked to Ken. You know, me and Ken are still basically best friends. We talk yeah. a lot. And it was very tough on Ken's son to live in that, you know, that legacy of him. Mm-hmm. And in fact, there was a time when Ken was just about going to bring him to Pepperell. Yeah. But his son was like, Dad, I, I want to go somewhere else mm-hmm. that, that I'm not Ken Irvin's son there. Yeah. And, but Garrison faces a lot with that with his son Gannon. And, but he's a good player now. He's a good player. I, I yeah. spent a lot of time with Garrison in the All-Star game last year, and I told him, I said, man, I said, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but I rode around at one point with a hearse for Heisman on the back of my car for about six oh, yeah. weeks. Yeah, I said, you're my damn dude now. <laughs> yeah, that was my real. dude back in the day. Right? And uh, but he's a very very nice guy. Lives in yeah. all those guys live in like North Fulton. 
mm-hmm. Alpharetta area. Yeah. I met Perilous Price. Perilous Price's son plays at Ken School. Okay. So all these NFL guys. Um, matter of fact, the, this guy just had two five stars. I cannot believe I'm going to freaking – the guy played for the Falcons, left tackle. Uh, his son went to Michigan, had one go to Stanford, two six five, three hundred pound kids back to back. I cannot believe they're escaping me. But left tackle, yes, he played for the Falcons for probably fourteen years. Really? No, I'm gonna look this up because I'm telling you right now. No, I'm, I'm gonna give myself a benefit of the doubt. Hey, been, we got you on, out late. I've been on the road for yeah. a day and a half. But yeah. um, we just appreciate your time, man. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, but but you know that's been the you know the fun part about my job is a little bit every year I get to kind of relive playing for a state championship because I get to watch them every year. And it's part of my job. And it's really cool. Cause I know what those kids are feeling. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I, I know that feeling right there. You know, yeah. we're not, not everybody's Buford and you win one every year and them who cares, right. you know, but right. those teams that win one that you hadn't won one either ever or win one long time, you know, like, like did you, you know, you you're not gonna pay for gas for a little while. Yeah, and and, and that whole community, it, it means so much to even the whole sure. Yeah, because, sure. Because they, Absolutely. You, you know, like, like you said, Bell Dawson, yeah. all those guys. Like, yeah. oh, we've seen it so many times. Yeah, we had never seen that before. Yeah. No, and we didn't expect to win it. Yeah. You know, we thought it was everybody was against. Just want to beat Cartersville. Yeah, beat West Roman Cartersville. Yeah. So, you know, well, see our, what happens. Our, our heart was broken the year before. Last sure. Play of the game. Yeah. Oh my Shot. god. And yeah. and we, uh, I mean, I wasn't a senior. You guys were seniors, yeah. but I mean, I could still feel. You yeah. know what was going yeah. on? I was still in the locker room, and I, it was like, you know, we got to get back to playoffs. Yeah. Well, I remember. I remember not, not fifteen and zero. I remember uh, um, when that game. That was a junior that Rockmore game, and I remember walking in the locker room, and I, I just played a little bit. I'm not. I was sparingly there. I played. I played when Kevin Hunt couldn't breathe. Yeah. When he needed two snaps, <laughs> right. I'll go play. Yeah. Right. So, and then uh, I remember walking in and seeing Tony Hall crying. Yeah. I thought, boy, yeah, this is well, bad. Well, I was in that locker room. Honeycutt yeah. dressed us out that year. The yeah. young, young guys. Yeah, yeah. That was I was one of the young, yeah, young guys yeah, then. Yeah, and I was just you know kind of keeping keeping quiet in the you locker know, room. The thing uh, people ask me all the time. I tell you, the one thing I'll ne- kind of you know the early county game was kind of our crazy uh, celebration. I mean, that was the yeah. deal. Yeah, the state championship was kind of over. By the third quarter, yeah, it was. I remember early walking, county was a state championship. Yeah, I remember walking yeah. in and uh, seeing Frankie, and and you may not remember this, but Frankie kind of gave up, stood up, and gave a speech, and said, "Look, my dad had never seen me play. You know, his dad passed away." And I remember, man, looking at Coach Honeycutt, and then I mean, his eyes was you know swelled up, and I was like, you know, that was a moment you right. never forget. Right, right. Crazy. I was in. Um, so me and Brandy bought some furniture. I don't know. Eight ten years ago, maybe, and hadn't delivered. Guy, two guys walk up and they're bringing a couch up. I had some ruthless front steps. Yeah, I was, I was giving them a beer, hand them a tip, whichever one. And they're toting furniture up, and he sets the couch down. And Brandy's telling him, you know, put it here. And he goes, "Wait a minute." He goes, "What is that?" I can't remember. What I mean, I had a, I don't know. I had something up. He goes, "What is that right there?" And I was like, "That's a pepperel something." He goes what year and i said well i graduated in my senior year it was 90 football see he goes man i'm from early county no, no way. way and i said no. oh and i said oh my <laughs> god he goes, he goes no 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 i played on oh, that field unbelievable so i kid you not cool. the guy sets up the thing what yarborough was it it wasn't yarborough <laughs> oh, this was a db that guy. That walkie Perry so it was a, this was a Ooh. db so i said all right i said Sit down. We'll watch a minute of this thing. He goes, I ain't watching that damn thing. <laughs> so he set it up. And he goes, you really got it? I said, yeah, because we just had went through, I think, the thing with Tony. You know, yeah, we'd yeah, have yeah. to convert all those games over to DVD. Yeah. So me and him watched about um, probably a quarter. And he was pointing out, like, this guy's doing this, this guy's doing this. He goes, you yeah. turn that thing off now. I'm done. <laughs> he goes, I ain't damn straight staying for that fourth right, quarter. Right, right, right. So. Yeah, I tell people, you know, I'm not so sure we won that game, but we won on the scoreboard. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was, yeah, it and was, a, and a hell of a catch by Rusty Mansell in that game, by the way. Uh, it got caught. You know what? It's okay it's, though. It's so, That's yeah. okay. I can show you a text right now. That's okay. I can show you a text that happened this week. I had a parent at GAC that sent me a very nice. Their son is starting at North Carolina, and Ken trained him, and he, he sent me a very nice text. I want to thank you for. Uh, all the exposure you gave my kid, and he goes and Ken, Coach Ken, got my kid ready. And I said, man, that is that is 
that's one of the greatest human beings you ever you had your kid around. I said, Ken Irvin is pure as it is. Right. And uh, I said, he's in it for the right reasons. And I said, now, he can't hit a tight end in the end zone wide open sometimes. <laughs> I said, but that's my guy. So I didn't hear anything. So I guess he took the screenshot and sent it to Ken. So I swear, like five minutes later, Ken <laughs> sent me like three clips. And he was like, I, I threw the ball to your ass. <laughs> and then one time you were too slow to even go catch it. So still to this day, I give Ken a little That's bit of funny. hell. Because uh, the, the first drive of that game, we go down and – um I say I was OP. Ken says I was way too slow to catch the ball in the corner. But uh, we went for like fourth down, and, and the very next play, Yarbrough just freaking runs one about 80 yards, you know. I don't yeah. know if I've ever seen anybody could run full speed and stop on a dime and be running full speed again Yeah, like that guy. The kid I played – I don't even know who the kid I played. The kid I played against in that game absolutely whipped my ass for four quarters. That didn't look that bad on tape, thank God. Yeah. But I'm telling you, when I got on the bus that <laughs> night, that was the first time I was like, we got back to the hotel and where we stayed, uh, somewhere. I and remember what it looked like. Hey, but I had, had it has like four to a room. We were roommates. Were we? It was me, me, you, Fountain, and oh my God. And, and Henderson. Do the, I remember. We were roommates. I, 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 I just now thought about that. I remember I got in that bed and I said, shut the F up. Right. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> right. Because I have the people, the young kids, y'all, you know, the younger right. guys were out running around. No. I was the one that didn't. I'm I good. was the one good. that didn't because you know what happened there. They got yeah. caught leaving because yeah. Yeah. John, yeah. Johnson was at the top of the stair or the <laughs> balcony. And he blew real loud at him, and they, they ran for a while. I remember that was like the first time I didn't I'd ever it. went. I, I would imagine these guys in NFL where they feel like every week. But, like, I got back, and I was like, I'm beat up. Well, yeah. no, yeah, like I said. I, they were all physical. Oh, yeah. we went on scoreboard, but I don't it's think we still, went on the field. They, they were probably the best team in the state. They were yeah. good. You know what's crazy? So they had one loss that year. Yeah. One loss. You yeah. know, there was only four classifications. Yep. Excuse me. They had two losses. They lost to Mitchell Baker in a tight game again. They had lost to Bainbridge. Well, Kirby Smart played for Bainbridge. Well, Bainbridge was a 4A school, and they were one of the best teams in the state. Right. You know how bad they'd be in Erie County? Like 38-7. to 7. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I remember when I was talking to Kirby one time, we were talking, I was like, dude, y'all y'all realize we played this team in South Georgia. He goes, bitch. <laughs> you know what we did to them <laughs> I was like I gotta see that that's hilarious and he pulls that because Kirby was like a sophomore yeah. he pulls out a program and sure enough they drug them yeah. and that's when I knew like that was a different because he might be that team like that mm -hmm. was a different world yeah that different was the most world. terrified I'd been when I and wouldn't even know the opposing team I was scared to death the honey was gonna kill me so I get down there and I unload my bag you know we had those big bags right? yeah yeah so I get down there of course no, no, it was uh, Dowdy was sitting, Eric Dowdy. was beside me. Eric yeah. Dowdy was beside yeah. me. We're yeah. both unloading our stuff, you know. Yeah, I pull out two left shoes, two left cleats. <laughs> one was a practice, one was a game. I don't know how I did it. Oh wow! So panic sets in because you ain't I even mean, tell that. I'm in Early County. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It ain't calling Mama and saying, "Hey, yeah. you got to help me out." I'm freaking out. I left my cleats in Morgan County, so I get to Morgan County to undo our bag. Yeah. I don't have them. So Clay Graham. Got his confiscated, and Clay Graham wore like a pair of twelve Converse on the sideline the whole game. It, it, <laughs> thank God, yeah. So I think it was Clay, somebody. But I was like, look, I got to have a pair of cleats, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, thank yeah. God, Dowdy brought his yeah. practice and gang cleats, so he gave me his other practice. So I had, you know, at least matching shoes. You know, or, Eric, you, know Eric's, you know, Eric's assistant principal at a massive school in Columbia. I didn't really know that. massive. Didn't Scott know. Crabbs assistant principal. I know Scott is trying. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Frankie is doing, uh, he's doing tremendous. I spoke in Memphis last year, the Memphis touchdown club and, and, and um, Frankie got a chance to come. It's great. You got a chance to catch up. He's got twins and, um, he's doing real good up there. And, you know, Kevin Ashley, I think they build every dollar general in the free world. I mean, so he's like, they're, gone. they're busy. All I mean, the he's time. busy. Money, yeah. Yeah, man. Oh dude. It was like three years ago. He's building these things. Yeah. They're, they're, they're so backed up. Like mm -hmm. I hadn't talked to him in two years, Yeah, but it's, it's a, a miracle. It's the fastest growing retail store in the I'm United sure. States. I'm yeah. sure. It, it it's out. a miracle that that we didn't that group ended up decent and not in jail. You know why? One person. Yeah. I'll yeah. be honest with you. Yeah. Lane Honeycutt. Yeah. Yeah. I talked, man. I talked to him uh, last Friday. I was going to Warner Robins. Now that's where Leanne came before he came yep. to Pepper. So I pulled into Warner Robins. I left, and I thought, yeah, they call in and and uh, talk to him. And what was crazy is like you talk to him. And you get that, remember, like, 
it's almost it, it wasn't almost it was a feeling like you never let that guy down yeah i mean i'm 47 years 48 years 47 yeah. 47 and like i want to make sure because i'm still good i'm not gonna, i'm not gonna miss weightlifting monday yeah. you know what yeah. i mean like yeah. that guy he was in it for the right reasons yeah. he was a uh he was a good guy and and you know it's amazing how many lives oh, he, he's some, changed yeah. oh yeah countless you know we were talking about it so my sophomore i didn't play my freshman or sophomore year i didn't play my freshman sophomore year. i played bat i thought i was gonna be i was gonna be larry bird you know i was gonna be that guy yeah could barely touch the bottom of the net but i was gonna be larry bird <laughs> baseball and basketball he got me bo Payne, kevin ashley um shane knight somebody else brought us all in one day and talked to us and he said like y'all are gonna play I ain't good. I ain't playing. <laughs> and like, y'all are playing. You know, you're gonna help. You're gonna you're gonna you know, you're not gonna you're gonna play for this team. I mean, what a decision that was, because I mean, you know, none of us Bo Payne was a huge piece of the damn puzzle. Oh, you yeah. know, and Kevin Ashley. You didn't tell me I was on I was a scout center. Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh my God. You poor bastard. I know. Yeah, Bo Payne. Yeah. Bo Payne was I remember we would talk to people and they'd be like, Who was that damn nose guard? Because right. he didn't look like I told he you wasn't exactly a was. typical nope. God, but he was so quick and so nice. Now, he wasn't going to kill you on Jeopardy. No, no, I'm telling, no, you, I'm telling no. you, football, Bo Payne, and Kevin Ashley was so hard nosed, mm -hmm. you know, so hard nosed. So, um, I mean, the, those those decisions he made to get us out, for him to even see that in us, you know, because they wouldn't have, like like them three freaky athletes. We weren't freaky athletes, right. you know, but wind up being contributors. I tell people all the time because I never want to say what I'm not. I was not. I was a average high school player on a great high school team it was unbelievable as a as a group right, as a right. group we that's weren't right. the most we weren't the most talented team in the state but as a group we were the best team i can say this that about team had a lot of temp yeah. chemistry it just got along we didn't have any problems no, i don't remember them we didn't have any problems i don't remember no i know we had some there were some things in my senior group that 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 kind of got it just got handled well so we didn't hear that younger oh, yeah. kids like me didn't yeah, hear there it. was a few things where people were getting some publicity and 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 ways some people were handling it but it was handled amongst us. Right. There were some yeah. players that uh, I spoke about this at Tony's um, um, funeral deal. That um, what kind of leader he was, but um, at Early County, Scott Crab probably one of the most respected kids we had. I mean, he Scott Crab four point uh, very good player, great family, great person. You know, Scott Crab walked the line. He didn't do anything wrong That's ever. Right. That's right. They were going to take him out. Early County, I remember it. They were going to take him out. I remember it. And they basically put Frankie in his spot. And, you know, they're kind of doing these things. And, you know, we're, we're down. So they got to make a change. And I remember Scott standing up in front of the whole team. So you're not taking me out. No, he, he didn't say it like that. Well, he, he said, more, <laughs> he said you're not, you know, and it was a lot of emotion. Oh, that's like, what I'm talking about. Yeah, emotion, not, emotion, not bad language. He, I mean, he got, you're not taking me out. That's right. You know, I'm, I'm that's you right. count on me. And, and uh, sure right. enough, man. Refused. Well, like, like the first series of the second half he pops a dude mm -hmm. ball comes out and you yep. know but it was that, movie like it really was that whole season that whole, was crazy we go back and look at it it really you know really was it had all that in it you know it was crazy you know that, but we won that game we we it was a forced error what a hell of a play by eric no no because no nobody ever te nobody ever taught eric dowdy to dive over the pile well you know and i asked him about it and he said because for whatever reason we were had locked beside each other and he told me that he kept getting the, the guy the yeah. tackle kept going after his knees sure he said i'm tired of this guy hitting my knees yeah i'm gonna jump over him and when he did he got free and then all of a sudden he's hit the quarterback and the ball goes <laughs> to the ground and it rolls forever how about brandon davis would paint his face up like the ultimate warrior yeah Didn't he? that was the best Didn't he? <laughs> he thought wrestling was like walking he around mess around. it was real like yeah. wrestling was yeah. real to brandon yeah he, he walks know. around like a hacksaw jim duggan deep going, deep. he oh. had on he had on the most pads of any human being that's ever headband, he had that's like Deion Sanders. Pads. <laughs> that's a fact. And the, the biggest neck roll, the neck. Ever. Yeah, I mean, he looked like he. Your Brandon was probably Robocop, six two, probably one eighty. Yeah, he looked six four two twenty mm -hmm. in pads. Mm -hmm. but he would hit you now. Yeah, yeah, he would. He was kind of a he, you know he was a sophomore, so he was kind of a baby. Jermaine uh, was I. I it was interesting because my locker was beside Jermaine, so you know Jermaine kind of messy. Yeah, it's kind of sloppy, yeah. you know. There was probably some stuff growing in there by the end of the year. And he would sleep before the game. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Everybody else is nervous as hell, and he takes a nap. I tell you what, man, Jermaine was so, like, tough. Yeah, he was. Because he would uh, 
he would uh we would do tackle drills and stuff and you had that chipped tooth yeah you know yep. and he he would always say like i ain't afraid to lose another one and everybody's like, what? I believed him. <laughs> and everybody do that count. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not hitting him. Yeah, I believed him. You were not hitting Tony Hall. That's that right. was a gift. No, Trent no, Farrell no. tried that. Yep. And he got his I didn't want to hit him or Mike Davis. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mike Davis. I mean, thank you. You don't, you don't talk much about it. Like, he was a huge player, huge role in that. He was really good. Yeah, our defense. The defensive line was so, um, you know, athletic. I mean, even Gabe was yeah. an athletic guy. Yeah. It was good. It was. I, I really want them to win another one. You yeah. Know, I, I'm not. I don't think any of us are like. Let's be so. I really would love for them to win another one and to be. You know. Yeah. So I try to tell people like uh, that, that's not from that area. Uh, what it's like, you know, it, when you drive through there, they got they got the Otis Gilbreth Center's got the like the the Pee Wee practice football. Yeah. You got three different teams practicing every yeah. single day out there. Yeah. Uh, when you go to the high school games, you got the little kids out there in their jerseys. Yeah. I'm talking like you know elementary school up, yeah. middle school up to the, you know, I mean it's it's a culture. I, mean, I grew it, up. It's I unreal. grew up in Pepper really wasn't that good. Yeah. So it was all West strong. It was all West strong. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I remember thinking, how know, cool would it be? We'll never. Yeah. That, you know, I mean, because not here in middle school. Seriously, by my sixth grade year, I'm talking me, Frankie. Ken, Scott, Eric, oh, we're yeah. 0 and 10. Yeah. Could you imagine if you're 0 and 10 now in sixth grade? Hell, you're, you're at four different schools. Yeah. Everybody rolls. Yeah. Man. You know, and it really wasn't. It was just, we, you didn't know it. Your parents weren't moving you. No. I mean, where no. you lived is where you lived. Yeah, that's, right. that's it. But it was a great coaching staff. It was a great year. Um, Coach Hensley. Coach oh, Hensley. Yeah. I live next door to Coach Hensley. God dang. Do you really? I live right no, now? No, don't mess I did. Up. Don't mess up one oh, of these 10. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, don't mess up one of these 10 random questions. Oh, okay. don't mess it up. Don't <laughs> yeah, mess yeah. it up. Right. Do it. Where to get to that? But, I, but I'll we say do this all night. I'll say this. You know, we got Jeff. Uh, Jeff's uh, uh, Lynn's son. Jeff, oldest son, is at model now. Great, hey, doing a great job. Man, man. they're doing an awesome he's, job he's, over there. And I, I'm rooting for those guys, Me and too. I want them to be big successful. Time. Big time. We're, we're we're in the district. That's where Anna yeah, goes. And we're we're rooting for them. I, I love time. it. I love to see him be successful. He's a good guy too. Really good. And I know he's like Lynn. He cares about the kids. Jeff is. Jeff is. Man, he, he can be a superstar. Yeah. Jeff, he's Jeff's got a good a, thing going right now. Jeff's got a really good thing going. Model community has got a really good thing going. Yeah. And he is, he was, he was the right man for the he job two was. years ago. He absolutely was. Two years ago. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But that's right. Kudos to Jeff because when it came open, everybody told him not to reapply. Yeah. You know, and he called me, so I'm, I'm going to apply again. Yeah. I said, go get it, dude. dude. Go yeah, get man. It. Kudos to Jeff, man. That yeah. was, that, yeah. Cause that takes a lot to say, I'm coming back. That's yeah. right. Well, Rusty, I know you've had a busy day. It's getting a little late. Mm. And like Andrew said, we could do this all oh, yeah. night. Yeah, we could. And, and, and I, right. I, I straight up look forward to doing uh, this again soon. Yeah, man. But what I'm going to do tonight, we're going to go ahead. Rusty Mansell, are you ready? Uh-oh. Good luck. <laughs> Rusty Mansell, that's 10 random questions. 10 random questions you'll answer with a yes or no or something short. You have one mulligan. Right. Uh, that mulligan can be uh, uh, no comment. All okay, right? good. Are you ready for 10 random questions? Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Who's the most dominant undefeated football team? 1980 Georgia Bulldogs? The 1972 Miami Dolphins? Or the 1990 Purple Dragons? <laughs> One team had Herschel, so I'll say nice. <laughs> I'm going to say Frankie was, Fletcher was pretty damn good, but Frankie Herschel, was Herschel, good. Herschel's it's been He's the goat for a long time. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, do you still have nightmares about Coach Hensley chopping wood outside of your bedroom window? <laughs> <laughs> the the craziest one ever, he made me help him cut grass one day, and we cut over a yellow jacket nest, and he got mad at me because I quit because I got stung about 18 times, and he called me the P word, and I had, I went to the house crying, basically. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it's bees, coach. Dude, his yellow jacket is all over. It's no, like he, terrible. He's like, "What's the problem?" <laughs> I'm like, "Dude, I can't see. I'm, I'm about to have a seizure over here. I'm not freaking cutting the rest of your grass." I mean, he, we're talking about a guy that would turn his hat around backwards, go sliding across the practice field. Yeah, you realize that he on would his cut, billy, he would cut grass with a push more about once every six months. <laughs> It looked like like a Disney safari over there. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't exactly the landscape type. You know what I mean? I do. I do. All right. <laughs> Rusty Mansell, one's got to go forever. Uh, Bear Bryant, Luke Bryant, Luke Duke, or Duke's Mayonnaise? <laughs> Duke's Mayonnaise. Come here enough, I hate mayonnaise. 
he's a terrible. <laughs> uh, Rusty Man said, did Mrs. Peterson own more than one pair of brown pants? <laughs> <laughs> yes, she did. She also owned that Mitchell Jolly may or may not have put two live crew in the audio as yeah. the thing come down the stairs. And the as, language she, laboratory. as she turned on the language laboratory, yes. uh, me so you know what was playing. and Hungry. She heard it and was like, what is going on? And everybody played the fifth. And Miss <laughs> Peterson, bless her heart, putting up with us was. I'll never, I'll never forget Kelly Fountain writing on the back wall, Rusty Mansell number 83. Yeah. Yeah, on the back wall with a magic marker. She would send us to the Huge. office like once a day. Yeah, and I I can say this now because God rest his soul. I would get sent to the office, and Coach Knight would forge the principal's name. Would come right back. I love Coach Knight. This he, is, was that that is, he was that is a great. Awesome. He was the so greatest. Are you back down here again? I was like, oh, man, Miss Pearson's tripping. <laughs> so he'd just kind of scratch off, and we'd go right back in. And Miss Pearson, like, you all right? He's like, I got in bad trouble. <laughs> would be good for about ten minutes. <laughs> God. What's the best place you've ate on the road? Um, house, steakhouse, and Buckhead. Okay. I've ate with some, you know, I used to eat the, the SEC, the state championships would be at the Georgia Dome, mm -hmm. and all the SEC coaches would come in on like Thursday. Mm -hmm. and that was their little hang. So I got enough blackmail to get in there a couple of years. Man, I'm telling you, you want a expensive, but a real deal steak. Last time I was in there, sitting beside, uh, Jerome Bettis and, um, several, Former NFL players. Oh, we so we talking so real cool. expensive. Yeah. We're talking it's, it's hundred bucks a plate. Yeah. Okay. It's not ridiculous. Yeah. But I'm telling you, man. That's a little pricey. I mean, it it's, it's it's expensive, but, it, but hey, I mean, hey, when it's on their tab, yeah. right? That's different. No, yeah. yeah, no doubt. But it's 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 nice. Howls. House. Yep. Right. H A L S. Yeah. Buckhead. Buckhead's nice. Take you take your girl, man. All right, Rusty. What's your jam? What's your go to? Man, I'm a big music guy. I mean, I'm I'm from Nirvana to Tupac to Sam Hunt now. I got gotcha. you. Today, honest to God, I can't believe I'm going to admit this. Do it. Do it. I listened to it about three times. Poison. I listened to Belle Bib DeVoe. <laughs> thought it was me. No. There you go. No. There you go. I thought it was me. There you oh, go. Yeah. 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 That's not bad. Yeah. I ain't mad about it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. All was, right. Rusty, what is something that you do that uh, you enjoy that others may think it's very odd? Hmm. Um, I am extremely into like grilling. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, if barbecue pit masters is on, I will shamelessly like lock in like, like a good Netflix series. Why does it never come out like it does on the TV when you try to do it though? Man, I, I, I bought a, I mean, Brandy looks at me and she goes, how many damn times am I going here slow and heat, slow, <laughs> slow and low, you know, I'm like. That sounds, like a, that sounds like a That's midget right. stripper somewhere yeah. off of a, uh, yeah. Off yeah. of a point. Yeah, sweet with a, it's, you know, she goes, she'll come through the house, she'll go, what did, let me guess, sweet with a little heat. And I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, what that's it right. is. That's right. Yeah. Uh, when you think of Georgia football, what comes to mind? Uh, my grandfather, he, uh, you know, I wished he, I'm very thankful that he was here when he won a state championship. But uh, he's kind of the person that introduced me into recruiting and and georgia football took me first took my first game i was uh 1984 saw him play mississippi state and he was season ticket holder and uh but you know when i think about georgia football i think about him and and god i know he's watching like he's still pissed off about alabama a couple of years ago <laughs> yes, he is. so you, you know really want to win one for yeah. for those kind of you know right. he was a lifelonger you know didn't go to georgia he was a yeah. uh, he was in the korean war he was a paratrooper and um and but George football man was his his world. Great answer, great answer. All right, Rusty, um, who's the best mascot in college football? Oh man, <laughs> I mean, are we even like live mascot or we're talking about the best mascot in it's, college it's, football? It's, it's got to be Ugga. It's got to be. I've never seen Ugga hands down yeah. fly off the top of a stadium. That's pretty damn impressive. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what. There's three things that I've had to experience the joy I've seen. Uh, Chief Osceola throw it down at Florida State. Nice. And I've seen the the Eagle in Auburn. I've seen yeah. Mike the Tiger yeah. come out there and raise immortal hell. Yeah. Yeah. And and Ugga when he he comes out, it's it, what's crazy about Ugga is like he comes in and you would think like it's President Trump, like yeah. his police escort. Oh yeah. He's yeah. got his own tag on the yeah. car. Yep. Yeah. 
So Andrew, uh, Andrew always calls our cheerleader. He says, "Look, there's the Uga." Every time I watch a game with him, I'm like, "Damn it, Andrew!" You know, I gotta get some because we usually get ass kicked. He almost, bit, he almost, he almost bit Playmaker yeah, Baker. He now. Yeah, he did. That was yeah, great. I think yeah. that was his. Uh, I think it was his grandfather. But Sonny Siler, that whole family, it's gonna be crazy because he's not, he's not going to game this year. What is it? It's not even. It's not even real. That's it's crazy. Not even real. It is. It's crazy. All right, Rusty. What if you win a state championship? I mean, a national championship, and Uga was at none of the games. Because uh, what do you do then? You know, I thought about that the other you day. You jinx it and bring him back. I thought yes. about it the other day. Absolutely, <laughs> I wouldn't. If, if if Georgia were to win, every other fan base is going to be like, "Well, it was that year that damn COVID deal." Yeah, they'll have asked you. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, we got the say. No matter who wins yeah. it, yeah, it's going to be a co. I bet they won just a COVID deal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Rusty Mansell, who is the best team in college football? The most complete team is Alabama. Alabama. I think Ohio State potentially has that. Um, you know, Georgia's got to get through that hurdle. Yeah. Until Georgia beats them, it's just not – they're not um, – they've beaten everybody else. Yeah. They just have not found a way to finish off Alabama, and I think twice they, they should have them beat. So, until that. But it really, I think Clemson's pretty loaded. Ohio State's loaded. But I really think Alabama is, is a complete team. Now, we're going to see about a quarterback. Yeah. So, Mac Jones, see if he can do it. Gotcha. You know, through the through the season, but um, they, they just find wide, a way to do it, man. And they got wide receivers For and days. oh my god, tackles from Najee. I can't believe Najee Harris came back. Why would he? I thought yeah. the same thing. Why would he? I, come I thought the same thing. Man, we had him and Tua together at the uh, All American Bowl in Texas, and I remember Najee came downstairs and I looked at him. And I was like, "Holy shit, that's girly." He was huge yeah. man in person. Yeah, huge. I think Najee Harris has. Shared so many carries there. He's going to be a better NFL player once he's the focus. Because mm-hmm. they've been so talented there. Man, they got Trey Sanders, the guy to come off ACL. What you see Trey Sanders play? And what's that damn wide receiver? What that Waddle? Devontae well, Smith and Jalen Waddle. Waddle. Either one of them. Man, I think he had 780 receiving yards in that Iron Bowl. I swear, every time, <laughs> every time, every play, was to, he was scoring 80. Let me tell you the difference in college football playing them and how – what a kudos to Auburn for what they have done, how razor thin the margin is to beat them. So late in the game in the SEC championship, um, Jalen Waddles in the game with Georgia had been substituting Tyreek McGee for Mark Webb to cover him. They got caught in a situation where they couldn't sub because Alabama was going so fast. And it was a damn second down. And they ran him in motion. And once they figured out Tyreek was on him, they go backside, and Jalen Hurts at that point was playing. He rolls to the right, and he waits for Jalen to create that separation. And yeah, they knew yeah. exactly yeah. what they wanted in the matchup they wanted. And that's yeah. the thing about Georgia playing them this year. I think their secondary matches up with Alabama mm-hmm. uh, a lot better than they have. But uh, we'll see. They've got to finish that. they got to find a way to beat them. It's, yeah. just, it's just a, it's something on their minds and on their back. And there's so much uh, Kirby – Saban stuff there that I mean, they like. I mean, I'm saying there's just so much side stories on the whole deal. Now mm-hmm. you got Scott Cochran and they just find a way to win it. Yeah, they're just loading. Start thinking about it. I think they start thinking about yeah. it. that. I was at that Nash Championship game. I was standing right there. Yeah. And I remember I got a, fortunately, I got a great shot of it. I'm sitting there taking a picture and I remember this blur coming by me peripheral. And I'm like, this dude looks like he's open. But I thought they were going to sack him because they sacked him to play before. Mm hmm. And I thought they were about to sack him. And when he threw it, I mean, it was like I watched it and he ran. like Slow motion. Slow motion. And then it was, it was, it was done. Yeah. Couldn't get out there and deflect it or anything. Yeah, I wouldn't get out there on that. <laughs> throw it. Throw it. I, I, no, I got no twitchiness left in me. <laughs> yeah, throw, throw a little Debbie cake at his <laughs> face. Something. Dude, something. It God literally. It. Dude, they sacked him. And that was a, I was second 26. And I was like, man, they're about to win this game. Because mm-hmm. their kicker was we already. We all thought that. The oh. kicker had already choked. I mean, he, it, well, he shanked yeah, the shit out yeah. of that kick. Yeah. And um, when he when he that's how quick it was. Like the whole side I was on was just in shock. Mm-hmm. Like it just happened, but it was a hell of a throw. Yeah, and a hell of a play call. Yeah, it was perfect. It was yep. Rusty, where can the folks find out what's going on with you and Twenty Seven Sports? Easiest way find me is uh, on Twitter. It's at Mansell two four seven. Um, it is heavy sports related uh, social media for me. I have a. Uh, personal instagram i do my family stuff on but i have an instagram that for for recruiting purposes it's at mansell 247 underscore yeah but my twitter is uh at mansell 247 okay which is crazy 
that that thing is where that thing is. Yeah. I uh, tweeted a picture of the uh, Rock Mart um, cheerleading banner. The first game, I think, got 670,000 views. Holy cow. That was crazy. That guy went viral. Yeah. Because I had a great sign. So this yeah. is the match we've been waiting on, whatever. But, yeah. But it was crazy. Like USA Today picked it up. And once it went viral, I was sitting there watching the um, the impressions. I was like, because I woke up next morning. I got my notifications turned off because it's crazy. Sure, your phone. I turned yeah. yeah, turn yeah. off. Well, I got a notification from Verified. And it said large views. I never got, it's like the second time I ever got that. I was mm-hmm. like, what the hell? And I went and looked. And I was like, oh my God. And then, man, by Saturday night, I think was at 500,000 views. Jeez. It was crazy. And you crazy. never thought that when you posted these things. I just thought it was a great, it's a great sign. Sign. Yeah. L- Luckily, luckily, yeah. I did the right thing and I tagged Rockmart football. Yeah. yeah. Almost yeah. didn't tag anybody. Yeah. I thought, you know what? The, I didn't know they even had a cheerleading thing. So I go to the Rockmart Searshine game the next week and I'm staying on the sidelines and um, girl walks up to me. She goes, "You rusty?" And I said, "Yes, ma'am." And she's like, "Well, thank you for posting our, our cheerleading picture." And I saw, she, I said, "You cheerleading coach?" She said, "Yes." Yeah. So I pulled up the thing. I said, "Look at the views." Yeah. That's, so look at the views. The power of social media. That's That's crazy. Crazy. It was it crazy. Is. Yeah. yeah. It is. They should have put like Pizza Farm or something on there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> should the concert? Yeah. They lost. They lost. You know, six hundred thousand views in Polk County is, yeah. is is large now yeah. for anywhere. So. I'm sure they'll sell some sponsorship yeah. next year and try to get a El Nepal or something out <laughs> yeah. of it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, look, man, thank you so much for your time. Awesome, I, I appreciate can't even thank you enough you for coming out, job, man. I appreciate it's it. Awesome. Thank it's you. fun, man. We're having awesome. a good time. I'll tell you what, man. I listened to the one with Mitch. I mean, yeah. that was awesome. He's one of my yeah. favorite he's, people, no doubt. such a good dude, man. Dude, you, yes. Listen. We're going to have him back. <laughs> Mitch, We're going to have him back. Listen, if, any, if there's any hope for the class of 91 at Pepper, right. it was Mitch. That's right. Mitch was our hope now. Yeah. And he is definitely – Lived up to his potential. Oh, I've already asked him. I've already, I've already said, man, we got to have you. Back. Yeah, we, we got to have you back. Yeah, we, we call those repeat offenders, and hopefully, we can add you to the list. Yeah, of repeat like, offenders. oh, I'd love to. We'd yeah. love to have you back. Yeah. For sure. at, you may have me on with Mitch, you know, because yeah, we great. grew up together. Yeah, so, that would be fun. Yeah, yeah that would, would be fun. He was, yeah. he, he was, let's know, work that out. You know, Mitch was the biggest Hawks fan. Yeah. On the Galaxy. Yeah. And I still watch Sports Center Day. And nobody cares about the Hawks. Mm-mm. I mean, and I see them on like a Tuesday. I see them like a Tuesday night, and they're getting beat by thirty. I'm like, something Mitch is yeah, pissed yeah. off somewhere. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Them kids better have their room clean tonight because yeah. I know Mitchell is pissed <laughs> off right now. Yeah, uh, he was a whole, he was a dominant guy, man. Well, look, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Andrew, I'm gonna ask you uh, if you got anything left you want to talk to Rusty about real quick. I'm good, man. Okay, I'm well, good. I'm gonna take care of a little bit of business real quick, um, and. We mentioned this guy's name a couple of times tonight, and I'll and I'll tell you, um, he was one of the nicest, most he's a sweethearted, genuine human being, but he was an absolute animal in the weight room, and an absolute animal on the football field, yeah. and that was Tony Hall. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we miss you, number thirty three, and I, I we're going to dedicate this episode to oh, you. Man. We love yes. you, Tony, and we miss you, man. You was you was a good dude and a good friend and. Uh, hell of a football player, hell of, hell of a leader, yeah, hell of a leader. Absolutely. Yeah. So this one's for you, buddy. Um, another thing I want to get into real quick. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Raise Energy. Uh, they gave us a care package. We got a whole bunch of stuff from those guys. So we're going to be testing some of that out and giving some reviews on it. Uh, also want to shout out real quick to Rome Axe Throwing Competition Team. Uh, Stacy and Brady. They're competing in Ohio, uh, and they're hoping to qualify for the world. Um, the World Axe Throwing Championship. It's going to be held in Atlanta in December. So good luck to those guys. And if you haven't gone to Axe Throwing in Rome, go do it, man. I'm it's fun. Do that. It is awesome. And, and I might do that after we, Georgia, Alabama this year. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> that might, that yeah. might be a popular place. Yeah. They got midnight shift there. Yeah. We can probably work something out. Yeah. But like I was saying, if you take your significant other, make sure you guys are getting along because it's <laughs> not safe for you in there. Um, and you know the thing, too, uh, we lost two people in sports. Uh, uh, Gail Sayers, uh, unbelievable athlete, Golly. unbelievable guy, unbelievable human mm, being. Mm. Uh, uh, Gail Sayers passed away. And, uh, man, if you're a pro wrestling fan like I was growing up, oh, man. Uh, we lost the animal from the Road oh, Warriors. Uh, it was just terrible. And mm. I always remember uh, watching them decapitate the Mulkey brothers with a clothesline. Right. It was one of the greatest right. things I've ever That's seen. Right. So, shoulder pads, so, man. Yeah, Spike shoulder pads. That, 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 Georgia Bulldogs, Spike yep, shoulder yep. pads. So, uh, came came from those guys, and so and also want to say, rip to Charles Oakley. Uh, Charles Oakley did not die; he did not pass away, but he did lose the Dance with the Stars to Carol Baskin, which that's a mm, career oh killer. God. I don't know how you recover from something like that. You uh, don't. Game oh, seven, going hiding. Game seven. Uh, Larry Bird burning your eyes out on a three pointer. 
or uh, losing to Carol Baskin to Dancing to the Stars. Charles, uh, best oh. of luck to you on everything else, guys. Mm. Uh, and then one last thing we tried out. Uh, I want to give you a quick review on uh, Lay's uh, Street Tacos. Opened the bag up, and it smelled like a, a hairbrush that had got set on fire. <laughs> but I spent the money on it, and uh, I, I had to bite the bullet and taste them. They weren't too bad. So, uh, you know, if you go get some of those, pinch your nose and eat a few. And uh, it, it's like you know, it's like a first drink of beer. It's never that good. But, you know, you keep drinking them, it tastes better. So thank you guys so if much. If you're 21. If you're 21. <laughs> if you're 21, absolutely. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate it.